Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Brownstown Central High School and the Pit. I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. If you can, hit that share button. Get us out there on social media and all that fun stuff. We want to get a bunch of people watching this uh, this really good basketball game that we've got uh, ahead of us tonight. Actually, two, two good basketball games that we've got ahead of us tonight, but... Uh, uh, I know we'll talk a lot about the second game, but we'll have, we have one before that. But uh, first of all, I want to welcome in the two guys that will be with me tonight, uh, Coach Brandon Allman, uh, the head coach of the girls basketball team here at Brownstown Central High School, and also our referee expert, I guess you want to call it, uh, Mike Wright. Uh, he's a uh, varsity official here in the uh, southern half of the state uh, for Indiana and also a teacher here at uh, Brownstown Central uh, Middle School. But guys, thanks so much for uh, taking the time tonight uh, and uh, should be a good one tonight. Yeah, thanks thanks for thanks for the invite. Um, really looking forward to this. Yeah, it should be two really good basketball games here between two, um, in my opinion, iconic basketball teams in Southern Indiana, you know, coached by two of the, two of the legends in the Southern half of the state. Uh, one, you know, been coaching for 20, 24 plus years both I'm them. sure he um, doesn't want to say that, that no, he's been but, coaching that long but, but yeah just <laughs> two two programs that just I, in my opinion once again do things the right way uh, homegrown boys for the most part yeah and just play the game old school you know old school basketball yep other than they do break backboards yeah unfortunately we've had a couple <laughs> of those here um, hopefully hopefully that is uh fixed and won't happen again that's right but uh definitely want to thank our sponsors tonight if they do break a backboard i'm sure uh brown family insurance might get involved a little bit but uh um uh just you know they're an insurance company you know well, i so, have i think vegas has the over under on backboard comments at five and a half and we're at two already yeah. <laughs> well it's going to be over so that's right if but, we hit uh, if we have another broken backboard we'll have a really we'll good definitely video hit it. over yeah but uh, uh, um, but yeah, I also want to thank um, Todd and, and his family uh, there at Brown Family Insurance for, for stepping up tonight and helping out uh, the live stream uh, aspect as there. And then also Trent Shelton uh, of Bob Pointer, um, Chevrolet, GMC, and Buick. Um, for his, he's also stepped up and sponsored tonight's uh, live stream. But uh, again, just looking forward to a really good night of basketball. We live streamed last night over at Bedford and, uh, and had a really good night. Uh, for those of you that uh, are new to AWH Media, we do we stream mostly the Bedford uh, games, but uh, this is our first branch out game, so uh, looking forward to branching out just a little bit more um, because we are, are <laughs> excuse me, because I am a, a Bedfordite, I will say something for the Lady Stars tomorrow as they head up to Indianapolis to play for a state title. But uh, definitely want to wish them good luck. But um, our main focus tonight will be on, you know, the 2A number six and the 1A number two game that we've got coming up here about 7.30, 7.45 with the senior night festivities. We'll talk a little bit later about probably all four of those girls games because I know there's interest with Corden being a Mid-Southern champion and representative of the conference and uh, of course Forest Park unfortunately got us in the in the regional so Mr. Uh, Coach Allman will have probably some Something comments say, and, yeah yeah uh, just just another plug in I know Trent Shelton sponsoring I mean I, I bought my my truck off him four or five years ago so yeah, there you go uh, there's nobody better to work with easier to work with you're talking about a guy who doesn't really like to or enjoy to do all that stuff, and he makes an enjoyable um, event, even if you're spending a lot of money. Right. Um, you know, it just he just makes it easy. It's not he's not your typical used salesman that is just a you know your every guy everyday guy who just want to help you out. Yeah, and uh, you know Todd uh, Todd Brown's my insurance agent, so if you are out there shopping for insurance, give Todd a call at the. Uh, Brown Family Insurance Company, and uh, he'd be happy to give you a free quote as I drop my lid and my drink. Throw stuff at me. But uh, again, uh, this is a, a YouTube uh, stream, so feel free to send us a message there in the live chat if you're watching on your phone or on your computer. 
Uh, we will talk with you there. Definitely let us know where you're watching from. We always love to see how far our reach is. You know, that, that, that's always the, the fun things. You know, usually I have a friend that uh, uh, watches from Canada, so hopefully he'll chime in tonight and uh, help us go a little bit in, in international. But uh, I always love to see uh, where our streams are. Coach Allman talked about the coaches already, and I'm looking at Coach Bender and, um, and, Coach, the, and Coach Bradley and Coach Bradley and the JV coaches, Coach Wheeler and Coach Leitzman, and there's a lot of knowledge right there among those four, four gentlemen. A lot, of, a lot of wins standing out there too. Yeah, um, yeah. A, lot, a lot of wins. <laughs> I, we'll, we'll get more into that later, but that's just a lot, a lot of wins right there. I think Coach Leitzman's going to come talk to us between games. Yeah, he's going to come up after his game and hopefully after a win. But no matter what, he's going to he's going to come up and give us a little post game summary and his his synopsis of the game. Hey, we got uh, Tyson Crandall watching from Jasper. Tyson, thanks for joining us. But uh, again, also, um, we are on, on YouTube, so definitely hit that subscribe button. Would love to have everybody subscribed. I do post highlight videos of every game that I do do. But uh, again, just looking forward to a uh, uh, two really good games tonight. As uh, Brandon and uh, our coach and Mike are going over starters here for the JV game, we'll get those as soon as we uh, know who's starting. But uh, again, guys, can't thank you enough for joining joining us tonight. And uh, I can't think of a better game for you to branch out. Oh yeah, this is great. This is awesome. We have a sellout. Did yeah, you mention that? Uh, yeah, this is a sellout game, so if you don't have a ticket, this is the only way you can watch it. <laughs> yeah, you're not you're not getting in through the through the front door or the back door tonight. That's right. It's the second consecutive consecutive uh, sellout. The peaking game, peaking game last week. Was I'm going to guess. This is a guess here. Next year, I'm going to guess all games will be sold out. I would. Uh, and you know what? Mr. Basketball candidate on your roster, and probably I don't know if you want to say a guarantee, but. Pretty good chances of Mr. Basketball on your team. Or, I mean, for sure, an Indian All Star. For sure, um, for sure. Uh, yeah, and, I, and you know, that, 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 that 2024 class is loaded. You're talking about a guy like Flory Padoga, Makokomo. Uh, There's just a lot of talent in, in, that ne in next year's class, but. I know I'm biased, but I don't know if there's a better player in the state, all-around player um, with all the skill set that he has. Purdue is getting a steal in, in Jack Benner. Yep. I'm going to plug the Bulldogs. They're going to have a big crowd next year as well. They're yeah. young. They're talented. Um, I saw pictures of their Paoli Orleans game. It was standing room only. Uh, they got a great atmosphere there. Yeah, we got Eric uh, watching from Florida. Eric, thanks for tuning in. Again, he watched the game last night. And uh, Andrew Goodman, uh, again, uh, thanks for uh, tuning in. But uh, they're doing uh, starting lineups for JV right now. But uh, again, just looking forward to a really fun night. And definitely want to thank our sponsors. They'll be up in your top right-hand corner uh, for most of, for basically the rest of the night. So if you are searching, for a new car or some insurance, please see our two sponsors tonight. And here we go. How about some basketball, fellas? And yeah, what a, what a crowd for a JV game. Yeah. You know, we have we usually always have really good crowds here at Brownstown, but this is about as most about as big of a crowd as I've seen at I'd a I'd say at by the JV end of this game. one, it's going to be pretty full. Yeah. So a great experience, great atmosphere for these young guys to play in, um, getting ready for the, the future. All right, here we go. 
And the Braves will control that first possession. Three up. Just off. Good rebound. And I'll try to learn the names as quickly as possible, but you guys <laughs> know them better than me, so. The, the Braves were in, in a man to man defense here. Orleans being extremely patient. That's that Shot. old school basketball you were talking about where yeah. they don't just try to run up and score as many points as they can. They want to run their offense. Wheeler got the rebound and brought it up. Several picks there. Back out. Three up. No good. Offense rebound by Hutchison. And up and in. Assist by, by Hutchison, Lane Pelton with the bucket. Just a, a five out motion offense here by the Bulldogs. A lot of open posts, just screens. Oh, nice, nice take. Nice I didn't take. get the number on that. Number 14. The whip. I think we're already seeing probably similar tempos we will see at the varsity game. Yeah. Brown Sound Central's going to move the ball. Nice take. There. Attack just like that. Orleans will be patient, work the ball. Oh, that was shot was by 22. I don't have his number on my roster. 22 is Greg Harrison. Greg, okay. Gregory Hutchison. Three up. He's got, a, got away with a little shove there, but rewarded yeah. Bray Ball out of bounds. Yeah, Harrison fought his way through a screen really hard <laughs> <laughs> a minute ago. Hey, Brian, uh, thanks for tuning in from Alabama. I want to wish uh, Allie Reynolds good luck in her softball game. Three up. Oh, just yeah. off. Rebound, Nate Brown bringing it up. Right, good denial defense here. Well, jump shot, got it. That was number three. Number three. Mason Sawyer. That was a good open look. Found the open man when he got double teamed. Nice pass by Not sure there was a foul there or not. Three on the way, yeah. 15, Long no good. Yeah. Got nothing but the backboard. Now we'll have our first foul. Connor Elrod. Our first substitution of the game, 23, Carter Covert in, in replacing Lane Pendleton. Three's up, he got it. Caden Gwynn. Had a quick shot. Got a quick release. Nice defense right there. Tough, 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 turn, shot. tough turnaround shot by number five, Gage, Gage Dixon. Dixon. Wheeler with the miss. Hutchinson. Oh, he got away with the trial. Oh, he did. Yeah, Covered for three. Tough, really tough shot there. First, first play in the game. You know, the open look though. Yeah, settle down. Run your offense here. Oh. 
Three up, just off. Rebound to was by Sheffer. Double teamed out front. And we'll have a foul on the floor here. <laughs> that foul was on number 30. I don't have on my roster. Pearson Wheeler, yeah. There my, we go. My uh, cheat here trying to go back and forth is, is tough. <laughs> I know the players, but trying to keep stats is is a little difficult. But Oh, nice defense. He yep. got the steal. Win with the steal. Over to Wheeler for an open look at three. Short. Nice box out on that long rebound. And we'll have our first free throws of the game. It's on 12, which I don't. My Kay roster's not. Caden Gwynn. Yeah. And he got the first. I think he was going to get another shot if he missed it. Checking back in the game, number 32, Lane Pendleton. And got them both. Oh, nice, nice back, back cut. Great, great, great find. Lane Pendleton with the score. And we've got our first. Nope. I thought so we were going to have our first time out of the game. Psyched us all out. Must have been one of those like five out plays or something that referees oh, yeah. stopped the game. I'm sure, blame the referees. Uh huh. Yep. That's why you're here, Mike, so we can blame <laughs> you on all those calls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Going to get uh, 22. Hutchison on there. The push. We'll box that out of bounds here underneath. Screen up, screen inbounder play. How many of those you run, Coach? Oh man, there's there's that 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 and the the old mm -hmm. screen to screener out of the box set. Two of the two of the classics. I think that every team and in the nation run. <laughs> At every level, probably. Yes. Great. Nice drive. That was number 20. Connor Elrod. We'll cross screen, down screen. Win with the drive. Floater. Ooh, no good. Going yeah. to have another foul on the Braves. Win second? I believe so, yes, sir. There's a, a frustration foul there, I believe. Sheffer's back in the game for him. <clears throat> 35 seconds left. I wouldn't be surprised to see Orleans try to take the, the last shot of the, the half here, and the Braves go to a 2-3 zone. Yeah, they might just stand out here and play keep away for Brown Sound Central is not going to make it easy for him to do that. Well, it looks like they're leading more than 1-2-2 two, two here or 1-3-1 one, one, or is it just they, a sag no, back no, man they, to man? They, they switch it up here. Don't reach. Oh, great. nice drive. Great, great take there by Mason Sawyer. Close out the first quarter. The guests, the, the Orleans Bulldogs lead 12 to nine. What a good first quarter. Yeah, I mean, really good action there. Orleans just, you know, you're 
just be impatient, spread them out. Right. Driving a thing to the basket. Yep. Did have a question here. You might know this, Brandon. Um, what is the capacity of the gym? It's a little over 2,600. 20, 20, 26 or 2,700. Okay. So there will be 2,700 plus in here tonight, as I'm sure they sold standing tickets too, just as well. So good for them. Not only will we have Coach Leachman between games, we're going to have senior night we'll activities. Have senior night activities as well. We'll also have uh, Trent Shelton on uh, at halftime of the JV game. And then also Todd Brown will be on at halftime of the uh, varsity game. 2672. 20, I bet there's over 2700. Yeah, there, right. Sneaking in, people, you know. Yep. The Orleans side's already uh, pretty full. Or Orleans travels extremely well. They, they, they love do. their basketball down in Orleans. As well they should. And here we go. Orleans basketball. Nice. Braves that expanded the, uh, extended the defense. They're, they're in it. Gonna have another foul on Brownstown. One, one, four. 14. Preston Garrison into the ball game for the first time. Made his presence known right away. Nice little inbounds play. Got his own rebound. Alex DeWitt. Yeah, the Orleans Bulldog, I mean, they are just being a lot more aggressive on the offensive end, yeah. getting, getting downhill, getting the basket. I mean, there's a reason why the fouls are 5-1. to one. It's because they're being a, a lot more aggressive. Thirty-two with the jumper, Lane Pendleton. He's got six of the eleven points so far for the Braves. Offensive foul, nice defense. Use that baseline. I'm sure you coach that with your with yep. your girls. Use that baseline as another defender. Yep. Got his body square. I thought his shoulders were really square right there. Our officiating guru probably give his two cents there, but I thought his shoulders were square. It was a good call. I know all these guys. I'm going to stay away from <laughs> <laughs> anything that might be criticism. No, it was it was a good call from what I nice saw. Nice take yeah. again. Pendleton. It's keeping the Braves in it. Braves have switched to 1-3-1 one, one defense here. Little mid-range pull up by number 14, offense rebound 22. Kagan Russell, I think it for his first time in the ball game as well. There's another charge. Yeah, another charge, yep. You called it before he did. I did. I'm sorry. Sometimes it's instinct. Might have to mute me. Caden Gwynn taking both of those. Both of those charges. I didn't see who came in. Pier Pearson Wheeler back in the ball game. I think he got hit in the mouth or the nose there and was bleeding and had to came out, come out earlier. Step back jumper. Offense rebound, Sheffer. Oh, oh, that would have been pretty. Steal by there by Wheeler. A pass that definitely should not get made from the, you corner. know, the, yeah, the, the, <laughs> the, the free left. throw corner. Yeah. Or the volleyball corner, sorry. Threes up. Oh, long rebound. Looked good from here. The defense this second quarter for Brownstown has created two offensive fouls and a couple steals. Make that three. Make that three. Oh, nice, nice block. block. Great, great block there by number five. Cage Dixon. Now we have a timeout. 30. 30 second timeout. But again, definitely want to thank everybody 
again for tuning in. Hopefully you're enjoying the stream. If you are, please hit that subscribe button. Guys, what do you think so far? Just, just what good I expected. Game, yeah. Great, great ball game. Um, I know talking to Coach Leach been coming in. You know, he he uh, spoke highly of the JV team. Um, I know the Braves took a took a beating there down in New Albany. Got beat uh, 23 points or so there on Tuesday night. And Orleans earlier in the year, I know their JV team was successful against New New Albany. So he was expecting a really good ball game. What are the JV records? Did we announce those earlier? No, we did not. I know Orleans JV is, is 17 and four, and and Coach Leitzman, um, their record a little skewed. I know that they went and played in a JV tournament um, over the holidays and lost a couple games, but they they did not have a full squad. Some of the guys that split ways are split split some time both ways. Um, you know, it's per predominantly their C team that kind of went down and played in the JV tournament. Little floater by number five. Offensive rebound, 21. Sanders. Nice offensive rebound. Back up and in. <clears throat> Got a hold here, yeah. I Great. saw that one from here. Great call. Thank you. That, no. that's, that's exactly who I was talking to. I was talking to you, not the, not the official that time. I was definitely talking. I was definitely talking about Aaron there. He he definitely saw that one and called that one before the the official did. If this live streaming thing doesn't work out for him, maybe he could. Uh, get I'm not there. doing that. All right. I've wore the stripes before. You know that. We've refereed a couple football games together. Shepard inbound here gets it into Gwen. Oh, Drive. nice find. Great find oh, in the just corner. Off. Rebound. Sheffer, who might have got away with oh, with the travel there. Oh, and man. one, I think. Yes, they yes, will sir. count. Great, great up and under there by 22, Gregory Hutchison. Sawyer back in for Orleans, replacing Nate Brown. Chance for uh, the Braves at. Is there four fouls or, or five? Or five. Okay. Five, 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 yeah. five, five. I was one off. He got the completed first, that three point play. First tie of the game. Hmm. Bray still in the 1 3 1 trapping defense here. Ooh. Oh, just hmm. short. Ooh. That should be Orleans basketball. Offense rebound there by 14 to wit. Got knocked out of bounds, I believe, by Sheffer there. Nice cut. Nice curl. Yes, sir. Number 14, DeWitt. Nice rebound. Another offense rebound there, put back by Hutchinson. Gregory Hutchison. He's got quite a few points, doesn't he? Yeah, him and him and uh, Lane Pendleton definitely leading the way. He's Hutchison's got seven. Ooh, tough pass. Cross court. Nice shot fake, but but traveled with it. That's why it was so good of a shot fake. <laughs> it, was, it was a great shot fake. He, I mean, he got it to his forehead just like just like he's been taught. Um, just drug that pivot foot there, or drug that the trail foot there, and and got a, got a call for a travel. Pendleton just came in for Wheeler for the Braves, looking for their first lead, I think, of the game. Second quarter's moved pretty quick. Yes, it has. Braves stop, stop fouling. That helped. They stopped fouling and they played really good defense. Orleans has played really good defense 
Oh, he had to give up the two for the three. Un unselfish play, yep. yep. Probably like to have seen him yeah, take see that, him up take that and, one. Yeah. Good chance he's going to get a foul or even a good chance for an offense rebound there. Oh. Hope he's all right. He is. <laughs> Couldn't hit the brakes hard enough, could he? He, he tried. He, he tried. <laughs> Who just came in for Hutchinson? And Elrod just came Carter, out for Orleans. Carter Covert entered, entered Carter. the game again, yep. You know, Braves, Braves have right now three, three freshmen, a sophomore and a junior on the floor. Nice drive, that was number three. Sawyer. His sixth point of the game. Drive the ball or kick it. That's a kid you don't want to leave open right there. Pendleton, that's a shot that he he's normally going to make. I think he thought about driving, and that probably took him out of his rhythm a little bit. Nice pass. Great pass down low. Jimmy Sanders. Good strong move yeah. there by Pendleton. Could have been an end one probably, but... That looks like a more difficult shot to make than the <laughs> yes. one he just took. Yeah, and, and I said he, he doesn't miss very often. I mean, he's a he's a 42% three-point shooter on the year. So, you know, anytime you're above 40%, it's pretty daggone good. Yeah, the coaches will take that all day long. And twice on Sundays. That's right. It's like 25 seconds yep. to go here. Braves will play for two. one. Coach, Coach Leach been giving directions here, what he wants his team to do. He might want to get him started. A wing ball screen here. Pick and roll. Nice defense. Shot up, good if it goes. Ooh. Just took a little too long to, to get into the action there and you know, got a decent look from the volleyball line, but that's not what they were looking for. Yep. But here at halftime of the JV game, Orleans 22. Brownstown 20. We're going to take a short break and then uh, we will get uh, Trent Shelton over here. We're going to talk to him for just a minute and then uh, we'll be back in just a couple minutes. Everybody, welcome back here uh, to the pit in Brownstown Central High School. I want to welcome in one of our sponsors of the game tonight, uh, Trent Shelton. Trent, thank you so much uh, for making this live stream possible. Yeah, no, I appreciate <laughs> you guys for doing the legwork on this. Uh, uh, Todd called me the other day and said, uh, let's do something together. And Todd and I are um, good friends. So uh, we uh, kind of collaborated and got with you, Aaron. And we, we appreciate you guys putting the time and effort in. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's, it was kind of a last minute deal, but uh, happy that we get to do it. It's a sellout now, and so uh, you get you get to have your name out there in front of a lot of people out on, on YouTube around the world, so they need to come see you to buy a car, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Come to Bob Pointer GMC Trent Shelton, the, the one and only. Uh, and, and then if something else happens, uh, you get a fender bender, go see Todd Brown at Brown Family Insurance. That's absolutely. right. <laughs> That's right. We'll get our, we'll get our shameless a, plug in a, there. The combo go. deal there. That's right, but... Uh, so Chevrolet GM, 
and uh, Buick, right? Chevrolet GM Buick. Uh, we uh, we got a lot of uh, inventory. The the market was kind of crazy there for the past couple of years. It's starting to level off. Things are getting back to normal. Uh, Bob is in there with us every single every single day, and uh, he he's really happy to dealer trade for us. Uh, we call Coil, we call Champion, we call all these guys, and uh, when Trent Shelton calls, nobody answers, but when Bob Winter calls, people respond to that. Yeah, yeah, that's good to have, right? Absolutely. He's, he's in our hip pocket, and uh, he buys us donuts every every Saturday morning, and uh, we, we, we love Bob's one of the greatest guys ever. Uh, JB uh, took over from Bob, and JB is um, Bob has mentored JB on what he needs to do. So we got Clint Waskin, we got Billy Brown, uh, all the managers, all the salespeople. It's just a great environment. Uh, I can't say enough about this crew. They're just wonderful. Yeah, I know Brandon was talking about you earlier about how easy it was. He said he bought his truck off of you um, a couple of years ago, was it? Yeah, four, about four years ago now. Four years it's ago. been four so already, I, that's Brandon. What I, that's we about, were, about we were, for a new one, right? Man, we were talking, seriously, we were, talk, we were talking about that yesterday. I said it had been a couple of years, and the man was like, no, Brandon, it was pre-COVID. Oh, my goodness. Um, so I it guess seems like yesterday. I, I did. That's what it really did. Look, it's time for him to come see you again. You know what? Yeah, I, I probably needs new tires, so we need to trade in, right? Yeah, there we go. Uh, uh, no, but, uh, you know, a lot of people that we, you know, I personally sponsor. I, I sponsor a lot of people. I'm going to get those guys in here in just a second. But uh, Brownstone Athletics, Brandon, congratulations on a successful, another successful season. Uh, four Pete in the sectional champions. Uh, couldn't be more proud. My daughter played for Brandon. Did an outstanding job. I can't, I can't say enough about Brandon. Brandon's just awesome. You know, the boys football program, boys basketball program, Lady Braves basketball, Lady Braves volleyball, uh, Brownstown youth baseball, the impact, Kyle McClary, um, uh, Chris Lambring coached that. We, I, I personally, not Bob Pointer, but I personally sponsor that. Uh, the Indiana throwback softball team, Jarrett Terrell and Jamie Wilson. And a uh, funny thing, too, is, we, you know, being in radio, you get a lot of sponsorships, uh, people wanting to come to you. I sponsor a motocross team. So uh, Macquarie Racing, they uh, they uh, race motocross, uh, sponsor fishing teams. But the one that really holds dear in my heart, um, it, honestly, Zach Spicer does a great job with the Special Olympics. So I had the Polar Plunge, you know, you got some of these guys that come up. He does a great job. Uh, different, uh, uh, all the golf scrambles. Brandon and I played in golf scrambles. You know, we, we see each other out there all the time. So it is nice to donate back to a community that actually helps you uh, and your family. Right. Yeah, that, that, that's the one thing about, you know, I, I consider live streaming helping people, you know, see a game. That's why I don't, I hate charging for this. So it's one of those deals is giving back to the community that can't come in. Tonight it's just happened to be a sold out crowd. And, you know, there's a lot of people that want to watch this basketball game that now they can because of you. Well, and, and I, all I, that. Yep, I appreciate that. Like I said, we, you know, I got a lot of family and friends here. Uh, my in-laws, they're not here tonight. They're watching tonight. They were, they said on Facebook, they're happy where you guys are doing this and just happy to be a part of it. Uh, my daughter, Addie, she's at uh, Ball State right now. It's uh, almost 6.30 in a college town on a Friday night, so she may or may not be listening, but I you know her. She, she's, that, she's that in. She's probably at the she's library, She's probably right? at the library, Brian just the like library. her dad used to be. Yeah, That's yeah. exactly right. <laughs> so, uh, we got Beth, Luke, Drew. Drew's actually in the locker room. He's a freshman on the JV team. Uh, proud of him. Uh, Mark and Robin Voss, they're here. Lauren Voss. So everybody's, you know, a sold-out crowd at the pit. You you don't get that very often, but uh, the next next year, next couple of years, it's going to be awesome. So again, thank you guys for doing this. Thank you guys for putting this on, and uh, just just a wonderful experience for people that can't come. Yeah, I agree. No, I mean I can't thank Chris Yeld enough. I mean all his support over the last few years that the, me coaching basketball, but just not over basketball. The, you know, all the programs he he named off, and a lot of that comes out of his own pocket, not not out of Bob Pointer. Um, and, and not only does he do that, I mean, he's put a lot of years in as a, you know, as an as assistant principal in our school program and, and a football coach and, and coach a ton of youth sports along the way. So, you know, it's just, you know, when you see guys like that, it, it, it helps guys like me know that I, I got to get back in the future in, in other ways besides just being, being, being here and coaching those type of things. So it's just, it's, it's, you know, it's nice to live in this, a, a community that there are a lot of people who are willing to give and help out in any way. And, 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 Give in, give the youth, give to the parents, give to the uh, the he shed for you. I th you know that's just a, it's a great program that the athletes, uh, teachers, principals, administrators, all throughout the corporation. It's a great, wonderful community to be a part of. Like I said before, they they take care of us, we take care of them. It's customer service there at Bob Pointer and uh, and Todd Brown Family Insurance. That's right. Well, we can't thank you enough for everything that you do. 
uh, for the school, the community, and, and everything. You know, thank you very much for everything that you have done uh, yep. to help out the youth and, and everybody in, included in that. Very thank good. you so hey, much. I appreciate all you guys. Hey, uh, good luck second half to the Braves here. And then, then right. the varsity. This has been a good game. It's, it's been a great, great game. game. It's yeah. like the second quarter. Everybody start finding their groove a little bit. So we'll come out and see whatever halftime adjustments that come on. And uh, it'll be a good one to watch here the finish. That's right. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for guys your very much. Thank tonight. you, brother. Thank you. All right, everybody, we're going to take about a two-minute break, and then we'll, we'll come back for um, halftime stats and all that. But, uh, again, everybody, thanks so much for watching. And then uh, we'll be back here in about two minutes. And again, everybody, welcome back here to Brownstown Central High School and the Pit. Hey, uh, Sydney, thanks so much for the comment. Hey, Bob, uh, thanks for tuning in. And uh, it's probably on on your end, on our end. We do not have a, a fuzzy signal, so that is probably on your end. If you can't, just try to refresh it or something like that. It might just be an internet connection. Uh, but uh, again, everybody, just want to say thank you for tuning in tonight uh, for this much anticipated game. Let me reset here. Do we need to get to the stats before the game? Yeah, if you just want to yeah. do scoring stats. Yeah, halftime half scoring um, for the for the Bulldogs leading the game by two, 22 points, three field goals by Mason Sawyer, um, and two free throws for a total of eight points. Number four, Carson Gilbert, two points. Cage Dixon, two points. Alex DeWitt with a couple buckets for four. Connor Elrod with a bucket for two. And Jimmy Sanders with a couple buckets for four points. Uh, for your Braves, leading the way with, with 10 points. Lane Pendleton on five two-point buckets. Um, Greg Hutchinson, number 22, with, with seven. And Caden Gwynn with three. So, you know, a little uncharacteristic for the Braves, only only having three three players in the scoring column right now. So. I would, would imagine Coach Leachman want to get some other guys involved uh, here to start the third quarter. Looks like Orleans came out with the same starters as they did for the game. Brownstown Central is a little bit different starting lineup. That was a nice save. Nice by hustle, him. yeah. Three up. By Pendleton in the quarter. A little off the mark. Rebounded by the Bulldogs. Nice save. Once again, the Braves start the half out in, in their traditional man-to-man -man defense here. Oh, good. just lost it. Yeah, yeah, good, good read. Right read, curl the screen. Braves out the floor quickly. Contested, up. contested quarter three there by 30, Peter, Pierce Wheeler. That's the Braves' first lead of the game, I believe. Yeah, they had a shot earlier and, and uh, did not get it, but... <coughs> You see how Orleans responds. 
Wheeler a foul. Wheeler with the foul there. Number five. Cage Dixon go to line for two. Wheeler second foul. Missed the first. Leitzman uh, had a lengthy discussion with Garrison there. What do you think that was about? The second is up and good. Tied at 23 all. Good basketball game. Shot up. It's good. That's what it was about. I was getting ready to say the same thing. A little pep talk there. Once again, you know, three only three three guys were in the scoring column for the Braves, and all the way, already we get a couple threes by a couple guys who hadn't scored yet. I kind of feel like Tony Rom Tony Romo kind of knew what was happening before it happened. <laughs> he does that on his. Oh, uh, just he, lost that one. Yeah. Good play. 14 to wit with a bucket. Hey, we had a comment from Addie Shelton, Addison Shelton. She was watching. <laughs> like to say hello to to Addie. Shelton, um, one of my former players, you want to talk about a girl who, who got the most out of her ability and, and just absolutely did everything we ever asked. Um, she was a, a great player for us last year. And an academic All-State player as well. She definitely did not get that Ooh. from her dad. <laughs> she is in the library, right? Academic All-State? She is. Great strong take nice there drive, by number 20. Yeah, yeah. Really nice drive. That was by Connor Elrod. There was Let's a couple off foul. the ball altercations there that. 22 is the foul. Might be worth taking a look at as this game goes along. Yeah, foul on Hutchess at his second. The Braves second. Um, just, you know, Braves going back to man to man and, and Orleans doing exactly what got them in the lead early. Um, just attacking the basket, you know, with, with a lot of strength. It's hard for either team to penetrate right now. Defense yeah. is pretty good. Both sides. Well, I just did that. Well, uh, nice tip, tip away. I think the fast break points has been nil. Very, very limited. What Hutchinson got a steal earlier, I think, and nice little hook oh, shot. Great move. <laughs> DeWitt with a couple early buckets. <laughs> That's funny. Addie, Addie verifying that she is in the library. <laughs> <laughs> Three's up. It's good. Weston Wheeler. Second, second three of the quarter. A little miscommunication there, though. Mismatch. Good oh, move. Nice. Nice. nice up and under move there by DeWitt. Seems like we've called his name a lot. We have. That's his third third bucket of the half, I believe. Fans wanted a foul there. Braves got to do a better job in transition defense there. They didn't communicate well and end up getting a mismatch, and Orleans made them pay. Oh, yeah, that has to be one. Use his legs a little bit there. To yep. Foul on Brown, number 15, his second. Just the team's first. Well, isolation there for Pendleton. Yeah, great defense for yeah. Orleans. Another three is up, just short. Off the mark. Another, another strong take there by, by Dixon. 
Yeah, that was too easy. Two foot was on the line for sure. Pendleton. Pendleton. Brace, you got to do a better job here containing the basketball on the defensive end. A lot of a lot of gambling and, and just opening up and giving giving straight line drives. This third quarter has seemed a lot like the first two. Really fast. Fast, patient offense, decent defense. Yeah, my, Mike's yeah. observation a little bit ago, things are getting a little chippy at, yeah, out there are. both ways. And yeah, there's, there's yeah. one right there. Jump ball. Wishmeyer and Shelton into the game for the Braves. Shelton, of course, that, that is Drew Shelton, son, yeah, of, son coach, of Trent uh, Shelton. The coach has both of them by the shirt over here that was that was involved yeah. in that in yeah. that play. So good job from for Coach over here. Yeah, coach, coach Leesman, I mean, that, that's something I know that being a part of Coach Benner's staff for a long time that just isn't going to be tolerated, um, even though it didn't get called necessarily just got to play smarter. You can't can't put yourself and your team in jeopardy like that. Good move by oh. Nate Brown. And he going to the line. And that's his first bucket of the game. Third foul on Wheeler. Another Good rebound, yeah, yeah, nice rebound. And another missed opportunity for the Bulldogs at the line. They missed a, a few free throws here. Oh. Somebody was there. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter who. That's right. As long as a white uniform. Yeah, both mm -hmm. both Wishmeyer and Shelton in the game. Both both the young players again, for freshmen. Um, seeing their first JV oh. action. Oh, oh, everybody all right. Going up. Yeah. Yeah. Foul's going to be on DeWitt. Oh, Nate nope, Brown. 15. Nate Brown, his third. If my if my stats are correct. See it? Well, yeah, free throw is going to be was huge. DeWitt. In this, in this it was DeWitt. It was DeWitt. His his second. Yeah, I don't think. I didn't even see Brown out there. Oh, there he is. And he got the second. Got the second. Will they play for one, and will Brownstown let them? Almost like a 2-3 zone here. Yeah, it is. Is that something they do with the last minute, go to the 2-3 Yeah, they switch zone. it up a little bit, take a little time here, and then a lot of times they'll try to disguise it and end up matching up or, or going into a 1-2-2 two, two trap even. Also, I think a good coaching strategy since the Braves have struggled to, to contain the basketball. This, this is a way to sort of combat, combat that a little bit. Once again, here they go right into their matchup. Oh, and they call it travel. I didn't see that, but hey, 0. 0.8 seconds to go. You just tell them don't foul here. Yep. What else would you tell them? No. Catch the ball. <laughs> Catch the ball. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Score 34 Orleans, Braves 32 at the end of three. Yeah, we're going to take a break. We'll be back.
And again, welcome back here to Brownstown Central High School and the Pit. Again, want to thank everybody for tuning in. If you can, hit that subscribe button. Would love to have you subscribe to the YouTube channel. I think we are going to be in for a exciting finish if the first three quarters has anything to do with it. Um, yeah. We started to see the aggressive style of play, maybe overly aggressive. Three's up, three's good. Pendleton for three. Um, foul trouble. I know we got a, somebody has three fouls, don't they? Yeah. Um, Wheeler for the Braves has three. Braves back straight, man to man. Let's nice get another. Defense. Great defense, tough shot. Wrong place, wrong time there. Yeah. Big offense like, rebound Hutchinson. by Dixon. Will we see Wheeler the rest of the night, or is he going to be saving quarters? Um, it looks like I mean uh, he's got his he's got his warm up sh shirt on there, so I don't I don't know. Three's up, three's good again. Fifteen, Nate Brown. Exchange three point buckets here to start the fourth quarter. Great look. Rebound by, by Brown. Brown's starting to exert himself a little bit here in the second half. Now there's going to be another foul on Hutchinson. Hutchinson. That, Hutchinson. That's his fourth. Taking the charge might have been a decent option there. I think he was in position. He could have done that. I agree. Especially when you're, you know, 5'10". He might be a little bit bigger now. He might be 5'11", 6 foot, but... Not a not a really good shot blocker, so I agree there, Mike. Okay, if, if you go by what's already happened, there's already been two charges in the game. So Yeah, and as coaches we talk about all the time, you know, learning how officials are calling a game early on and those two charges were almost back to back possessions early and it would have been a good chance to try to take one. And that'd be nice to see Brownstown be a little bit aggressive here and see if we can get uh, some fouls. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if we've taken a two-point bucket here for a while. A lot of, a a lot lot of outside threes, jump shots, yeah. yep. I mean, Orleans is playing good defense. They're not really doing a whole lot of fouling underneath. There's yeah. a lot of uh, contact out front, but it's been both ways. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I consider Orleans, they're, they're more like a pack line. Three up on the way there. Nice rebound. Rebound Hutchinson, Hutchinson with the putback. And we've got a timeout here, Brownstown. 30 seconds. Uh, Orleans, though, you know, a lot of pack line, man to man defense, just really just staying right around a three point line and, and clogging up gap, driving gaps. That's probably what they're going to need to do in the varsity game, too. I agree. And then, you know, we talk about. A lot of three-point attempts here by the JV team. You know, our, our varsity is known for that as well. They, I think, got second or third now in a state uh, earlier on in the year uh, where they where they hit 22 threes in the game. Um, just you're going to see a, we, just a lot of a lot of great shooters. I know um, I've been asked by a lot of coaches now that I'm on a girls' side. You know, how how does Coach Bitter develop so many shooters? And it's just it's just kids getting in the gym and getting shots up. Right. Yeah. I think. Well, what's it take to, to to, what's that saying? It takes what ten thousand hours to master yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. So ten thousand shots, yeah. basically. To and it, it is just a, a lot of repetition, and guys are just always in the gym. Yeah. Now, I watch a lot of girls basketball. You look at the IU team right now. I think um, whenever um, Grace Berger, I think she's uh, during uh, one of one summer said she put up a thousand shots a day. Yeah, uh, uh, huge, and, and you, huge. It, it pays off. I yeah, mean. huge shout out. I know we're watching this game here, but you know the IU women team so fun to watch, and you know ranked number two in the nation, uh, coached by Jackson County, you know, yeah, alum, former resident, yeah, yeah. yeah, Seymour alum. You know, shout out there by by Brown.
the Braves trail by, by three with 4.30 left in the game. Yeah, shout out to her and what she's been able to build at, at IU. So, it's, yeah, it's just it's just awesome. It's you know a first first time sell out there the other night for for a women's basketball game at Assembly Hall. It's yeah, just won't be so the, won't be the last. No, and it's just so <laughs> it really won't be, and it's just so cool to see. Yeah, because they're going to get to host some NCAA games, and I'll be in the stands for those if I can get a ticket. So, you know, with all the all the talk about you know girls not getting enough recognition, but. They're getting it. They're getting it in Bloomington right now. Yeah. Wish yeah, starting, drive kick out to Pendleton yeah, for three. It's good. They're starting to get us some penetration and kick out. Yeah. On that. In that. Uh, Orleans has done possession. a good job. Orleans has done a good job answering about every time Brownstown makes a mini run here. Tied up at 40 with with 3:50 left to play. Ooh, yep, yep, good call there. Got a, got a, got a traveler. Foot, he sure did. Hutchinson's back in the game, replacing Bruce Shelton. And playing with four fouls. Got to be careful here. Put him in there for offensive purposes, offense, defense, substitution as the game gets closer toward the end. I believe so, for, especially yeah. especially for rebounding here, offensive rebounding. I think he's probably have, got five or six offensive oh, rebounds in the game. Spin move. And we're going to get a foul called. Now he probably Stop. wishes he had tried to just do a crazy shot there to get two shots, but uh, they'll get the possession back. Once again, Mike made the, the comment earlier. We're starting to see so a little bit more foul trouble on both ends. That's Elrod's third. Got a full timeout, Brownstown Central. We'll take a timeout with them. We'll be back. And welcome back here to Brownstown Central High School and the pit. Again, want to thank everybody for tuning in. If you can, in the comment section, let us know where you're watching from. We always love to see how far our reach is. As I know, we've got somebody watching from Florida already. So here we go, back to action. Good little out of bounds set there by Coach Leitzman to try to get Pendleton a, a three in the corner, but well defended by Orleans. Just a staple of Coach Coach Bradley's program over the years. Um, no matter how, you know, they, they may not be great offensively, but they are always very fundamentally sound on the defensive end. We may not see five shots the rest of the game unless they're at the free throw line. Or in overtime. <laughs> Braves being patient here, calling out a set. Cross screen, down screen action. I mean, honestly, I mean, if you can get down to that last shot, not saying you want to, but if you run your offense for the next two and a half minutes. Nice uh, penetration and kick great. out. Great look by Pendleton. Great, you know, you know talking about offense, defense. That, that was all set up there by by Hutchinson's drive and kick there. This may be the Braves' biggest lead. It is. See how Orleans reacts to that. 
Oh, nice pass. Yeah. I think the defense overplayed on that one a little bit to give him the. Yeah, fronted, fronted out way too high. I mean, they were out 15 feet front in the post there, and they just able to throw it over top and another strong drive and, and finish there by, by uh, DeWitt. Well, now Braves really do not have to be in a hurry. Orleans has four fouls, so they got a couple to play with. It looks like they're going to extend their defense a little bit and might just do that. Men half left in the, in the ball game. Coach Leesman wants a timeout. Yeah, another timeout. Isn't he out yet? <laughs> Almost. I think he's down to one left, <laughs> right? I, I, I like this timeout, even if it's, you know, only necessarily his, his last timeout or he has one left. Making sure your your young team knows what, what you want here. Um, you know, you can run a little action and see if you can get a, uh, get a bucket, or if not, you know, you're going to tell them they got to be strong with the basketball because Orleans does have a, a couple fouls to play with here, and they're going to be aggressive and, and, and try to create a turnover. On yep. the flip side, you got Orleans. It's like I said, they're in, uh, they can be aggressive. Uh, they got two fouls to play with. See what you can do. That's right. We got some people watching. Uh, let's see, SG9373 watching from Orleans. Janelle Deck watching from Florida. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. MJH. Watching from Gainesville, Florida, Brownstown alum, 1988. <laughs> Stephanie Martin from Tampa. Uh, Stephen Short watching from Alabama. Michael G from just down the street here. Watching from Brownstown. Hopefully, hopefully Janelle Deck. And then the Sheltons are watching from Gulf Shores. Hopefully, uh, my dad's on watching. There you go, Aaron Harrell Golf. <laughs> yeah. Um, hopefully, Janelle Deck and. And the, the, the worst burgers and the hot sellers are down there enjoying some great weather down there in Florida and playing yes, some sir. golf. I, I, they rubbed it in earlier in the week. I got a picture from Jonathan Hochstetler out on the golf course. Um, the only thing I didn't like were the, the alligators that were pictured. That was close. He almost had great to use his defense. last time out. And a foul, good quick foul. Yep. Sawyer. Sawyer. What's the... Uh, the free throw switch situation for the game. Do we have with very little yeah. um, Braves have been at the line, I think, a couple times. I think we've got a foul here on 14. Um, Coach. Uh, Coach Smith right on the sideline there. I, I think he was one to travel call. I, I was going to get Mike's opinion there to see if he, he thought he drug his foot there when he. I would, not, I would not foul. I would not foul Covert. I, I know he's an 87% free throw shooter on the year. Ooh, there's a foul. Wishmeyer going to go to line for two. That's Sawyer's. Third or fourth? Third? So his third, yep. It's a uh, thank you, Nick. It's Swayer, not Sawyer. Swayer. Swayer. Thank you, Nick. And we've got a timeout here. Let's see who called this timeout. The Orleans full, call. Full timeout. Like sway in the wind. Swayer. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> yeah, we apologize we for that. Yeah, we apologize. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a misprint. It's a misprint on our uh, our lineup sheet. It, it, it yep. is spelled yep. like Sawyer, so yep. we we do apologize. Yep. But uh, hey, Evan, uh, class of uh, 2009 from Orleans, watching from Tennessee. Fireman six seven eight five, watching from Illinois, rooting on Orleans, and Blake Love his nephew. So thanks everybody for tuning in. Appreciate the comments, appreciate the interaction. That's what I like about these uh, live streams. So kind of interact, get to talk to people. And yeah, please, please, yeah. Don't, please don't hesitate to ask any questions or, or comments or any, any feedback. Yeah, we got two free throws coming up here. Well, now the... Uh Shoes on the other foot. Brownstown has a foul to give. Ooh, they'll, they'll have the lead. lead coming down here. Long, long on the first. 
Yeah, free throws are huge. Got the second. A little pressure. Three-quarter three court pressure. He's doing his job. Went to a little, little think, zone trap there. I think we'll see a timeout here pretty soon by Orleans. Yeah, if they don't get a shot off, I think you're right. Because they haven't seen this all yeah. night. He's going down there right now. There it is. Yep. Coach, Coach Stroud takes the timeout here with, with 38.4 seconds left. Ball will be on the sideline. That was a good timeout since they hadn't seen that pressure to defense yet. Yep. Hey, Leanne watching from San Antonio. Getting all over the country there now. We go. So thanks for tuning in, Leanne. Up to 318. I think that's the yeah. highest I've seen it. So please keep sharing, liking. Yeah, please share it out. Love to get that number up to closer to 1,000. If you can, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have all of you guys subscribe to the channel. I do live stream a lot of sports. If you uh, And then also post highlight videos. Try to. And, uh, But again, can't thank everybody enough for tuning in and share us out. We'd love to get the, up to the 1,000 for that varsity game tonight. I know we're going to talk about the two varsity coaches a little bit more and their records and their experience, but uh, we've got two JV coaches that are pretty good at what they do too. Could definitely be varsity coaches, and one yeah, has been. Yeah, I mean, Coach, so. Coach, Coach Leitzman is, has been a varsity head coach at a couple different schools in, in Medora and Springs Valley. and and won a, won a sectional championship down there in Springs Valley. You know, they, I think they about burned the town down because it had been so, so long and, you know, brought some life into that program. Yeah, he did a good job. I did officiate a couple of his games at both places. Once again, Braves do have a foul to give here. So, you know, if you, you think you're beat, they, I'm going to sure. Yeah, just don't foul on a shot right now. Was it deflected? Yeah, it yes, stay. Good. Orleans basketball. Hey, Elena, thank you for tuning in. Orleans class of 1993. Coach Stroud just looked at Coach Leachman to see what he was calling on defense, so he knew what to call. Yeah, oh, call so time out. That's instead. right. This is, this is where, you know, the game of cat and mouse really comes into play here. You know, you, Coach Stroud calls a timeout, set up a play here. Does, does Coach Leachman come out in, in, a, in a main defense or a zone defense here? Um, you know, if I'm in the huddle right here on – Coach Stroud on the offensive end. I, I'm calling it. I'm drawing up a play maybe for a man, but I also have a, a zone set called. So you got to be, be 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 prepared for both uh, both defenses. I will say there's three varsity officials in the locker room saying don't go in overtime. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand what you're saying. As the crowd is starting to file in, tonight's game is sold out. A little over, a little under 2,700 officially seated. But who knows? Uh, you see a bunch of people standing along the wall tonight. We know, so. we know Coach Allman's seat's going to be empty tonight. He's up here with us. No, it's not. Is it, is it empty down there? Somebody no, said no. no. I think my mom is actually sitting in it right now. So she might be saving it for my wife. I know she's, she's on her way. All right. I think we'll see another timeout before the game's over. Oh yeah, I don't even know how many are left. I haven't been keeping up. I said we Brent. would. I said we wouldn't have five more shots the rest of the game, and I don't think we've had. Braves, two. Braves appear to be in a zone here. Oh, nice little hold. And yep. Great, yeah. great fake there. Red, to, red to switch. Got switched out, and nobody there to take him. Nice drive, but you know, good, good foul there. Good foul there by Pendleton, make him earn two free throws at the line here. I'm just watching the coaches coach. <laughs> and got the second. And I think uh, Brownstown will use their final timeout. With 23.4 seconds to go. What a good, good basketball game. Uh, just a reminder, tonight is senior night. 
So we will show senior night festivities here uh, between games. So please stick around for that. Yeah, nail, nail biter in the, in the pit for this JV game. Um, just, just some really, really good fundamentally sound basketball by two programs. Both teams are now in the one and one. So Orleans, are they going to come out and foul right away, or are they going to try to get a steal? Not sure they've gotten a steal all night unless Brown sounds throwing it to them. Yeah, I was going to say, they, they had that one, it was really, really bad defense, actually. They let the guy go by, and he tipped from behind, and they ended up, end right. up getting that one. But, yeah, that, I, I believe that might be their only steal all night. I, I would anticipate some full-court full court pressure here. Um, I still think, you know, this is just my coaching philosophy a little bit. 23 seconds is, is a long time. Uh, unless, I mean, I, you want to try to get one really good trap here and possibly a quick steal, and if, if you can't get that trap, then, then of course you got to foul and put them at the line. You mentioned Carter's free throw percentage, about 87. What else do we have out there? Yeah, that, Carter, Carter at 87. Um, Hutchison, if he's, he's, he's out there. He's taking the ball out of bounds. It's where he wants to be. That's the guy they'd want to foul. He's at 38%. Garrison. Um, Pendleton at 78% and, and Garrison at 69%. Once again, they get it oh, in. Oh, they just got covert. They get it into the free throw shooter they want to get, get it to. Once again, not trying to. I know we, we he can't hear me, but the, the TV jinx all the time. He is, he is an 87% free throw shooter, 20 of 23 on the season. So regardless if he uh, makes both, we still have a one possession game. Yep. And that foul, of course, I know it was on three there. Swayer. His fourth. Is Coach Leishman going to foul? They go up three. No, never oh. mind. There, there's the, the there's jinx. that TV jinx. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Oh, they're going to uh, stop the ball. No, no communication there. Really tough off balance shot. Pendleton with a big rebound. I'd like to say the Braves got lucky there. They, they, they didn't communicate and get matched up early in transition, but you know, tough shot there by the Bulldogs. And the most important thing, securing the rebound. You know, that, that's the thing that, you know, a lot, of, a lot of games are lost on an offense rebound put back. I think you had more time than, especially only being down one. But if you let Brownstown set up their defense, it's not going to get easier. So he had a good look. And he got the first. And got them both. So Coach Leishman saying don't foul, spread out. It's gonna and a quick timeout. Timeout by Orleans, 30 second timeout. <coughs> well, let me, let me throw this question out to you guys just to get your thoughts, philosophies. Three point game, 10 seconds left. You, I, I believe, have a timeout left as Coach Stroud has, I believe, has a timeout left. Do you, do you automatically go for the quick three here or go for the three to, to tie or, or you take a chance on getting a quick two and call a timeout and setting up your defense? I like going for a quick two if you get it like on, on the first one. You can't really pass it and go for a quick two or yeah. unless you pass it on in the post. To me, whatever the shot is within three seconds, you've got to go with, if you've got an open shot within three seconds, if not, you got to set up for a, a three. I like, you, know, I, you know, I think I think that three seconds is key. At this to, level uh, of basketball, and I'm not putting any of the players down, but it's just a different game when you when the game is on the line. Yep. Make them make them beat you. Don't beat yourself. We'll see what they draw up here first. Now, now no, they're going to go for the three. Yep. That was well contested. Oh, oh, great shot by number, number Dixon. five, Dixon. He's, it's good if it goes. Oh, oh wow. I, I love uh, big, big shot by Dixon, number five. Uh, the city game into overtime at 46. Um, I, I love Coach Leachman also not call a timeout there, let his players try to make a play, um, and, and almost were rewarded a great a great look from about 25 feet or so from, from Pendleton that just went off the backboard and off the iron. Um, a little reminiscent of, of Butler there a few years That's ago. Right. I think if he did call timeout, we'd be shooting free throws because that would have been a technical foul. Yeah, because I think he's out. Uh, the, I think he's are, out are we out? Yeah. yeah. I, thought, I thought a second ago the refs looked like they showed. I know Orleans had one. I thought they showed um, Leeds with one as well. Aaron, what's your scoreboard say? 46-46. Now on the timeouts. 
Uh, zero and one. Zero yeah. and one. There well, we go. add one to them now because we get. Do they get another one? They back? get another they one. They get another one. Full timeout. So they do, get, do they get one too? Since they, get, they get one. So they get keep their two. one. Yep. <coughs> right, We're going to yeah. jump it up again. Hey, the Michael. Uh, referee's are, just now yeah, confirming that. Just had a question here for uh, from Michael. Is asked if we were live streaming the Braves sectional. No, we are not. Um, I'm not sure if that is even being streamed or not. I haven't seen the approved list yet. So I I would imagine I'm not. I don't know yet. I, and I didn't ask Coach Benner, but I would imagine um, that's one of the, the bigger sectionals in the state. Somebody um, might be doing it. It's just not us. Yeah. So, so five five teams in that sectional with with 15 plus wins. Um, it should be a dandy down there. Defending state champ, Providence Pioneers, and should be a good one. Here we go. Three three minutes and 30 seconds more action in this JV contest. And we talked before that we should go to a shootout in JV basketball for those in <laughs> overtime again, right? Yeah, I, I would I would love to see some sudden death basketball. Maybe I'm talking as a referee up here. This isn't so yeah. bad. No, this is no, this, this is, is this is fun. Here. Yep. Oh, oh he's oh, open yeah. that good pass. Nice pass. Oh, oh missed good layup. Finish. Great rebound though by by Dewitt. A great, a great set there by Orleans to start the half. A little scissor action there, or or, or X cut off the off the the post player at the nail hole. Uh, first time we've seen that all night. So Coach, great time to to draw that up. Coach Stroud keeping Swayer's head in that after that layup, giving encouragement. That's that was a tough miss. <coughs> first first free throw off the mark there. Second on his way. Good. Will the, the Bulldogs start strike first here in the overtime? Oh, oh he did not have to reach. He had the position. Yeah, he re yeah. yeah, he was definitely there. Yes, yeah, he, I mean, was. he was. He will get two free throws. And Hutchinson going to line for two. Once again, maybe I'll do the reverse jinx here. Hopefully, you know, 38 percent free throw shooter. First one, no, nope. up and no good. So hoping maybe some for some reverse psychology there. Second on the way, also no good. Yeah, I think uh, he was out of yeah, bounds out when he touched the ball. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Brownstown will be shooting two the rest of the way on the free throws, but. You need to hit them while you're there. Yeah. That might be a, a note for Orleans right now, <coughs> you know, to. Uh, One, two, two traps. If they don't like. Positions. Extended their the timeout. Extended their three-quarter pr court pressure there. Forces the Bulldogs to call timeout. Thirty-second timeout. Again, just want to thank everybody for tuning in. Just a reminder, it will be senior night uh, tonight, so between games we will show senior night festivities. Where's your senior list at, Brandon? Right, right. Yeah, how right many here. seniors do we have tonight? Uh, we got, we got uh, three three players. Uh, one who is, yeah, one who has been out for, I mean, hasn't played because of injury. Um, one manager, and then five band or drill team members. Awesome. Uh, all, all five actually are, are, are band members. Awesome. We will show that. Hey, Krista, thanks for tuning in from Fort Wayne. 1-3-1 one, one, trap. Oh, oh nice trap. find. Got the diagonal pass. Oh. Going to have a foul so, here on Orleans. Is that Swayer? Yeah, Swayer. Swear just committed his fifth with fifth foul and will be, you know, disqualified from the contest here with his fifth foul. But the cardinal rule there, he, he left his feet without anything to do with it there. Kind of threw it, threw it in no man's land and just lucky the, the Braves were in the right spot to, to come away with that steal. Jimmy Sanders is replacing Swear. We saw him earlier in the first half. I'm not sure has he played much in not, the second half. Not much sense. Nice free throw made. Does have a does have a four points though, so I mean he's had a couple buckets there around the bucket. Got them both. 
And Brownstown extends that defense. Yes, braced oh. pressure. Oh, near over and back yeah, there. Near. Has has uh, done exactly what I believe the Braves are trying to do, speed them up and make them a little uncomfortable here. Oh, great look at Tommy Key, though. Nice tip back, but no teammates were there. Don't need to be in a hurry to foul. Play good defense. Yeah, plenty of time. Two minutes. You played good defense for uh, four quarters. Nice back door. Great backdoor cut. And he will head to the line to shoot two. Garrett Garrison will go line for two. Miss it, missing your, your leaning post? Yes. <laughs> Kagan Russell Thank you. replacing Connor Elrod, who just fouled out of the game. Have we seen Russell tonight? It seemed like the first time I've called his name. Yeah, I, I, I don't have anything for him. Got the first. As the uh, third quarter was playing out, it looked like Brownstown was going to be the one that might have mounted up to foul trouble. But we haven't seen, um, was it Hutchinson that had three? Yep. Yeah, we hadn't seen him the entire fourth quarter in overtime. No, he's on the ball right now. Ah, he is. He's he just been able to, well, as we to say that. clean, yeah. yeah. Three on the way. And that should be yeah. Orleans, Orleans basketball. ball. Braves, Braves might have got a little lucky there. Uh, could have been a, an over-the-back call there. Um, but the Bulldogs retain possession. How did he get so wide open? A little miscommunication. Got the two points. Big, big bucket there by Sanders. I like to see Orleans play that defense again and not <laughs> think about fouling quite yet. Yeah, I agree. Plenty of time left. So we're meant to play. I will tell you what, the Sanders kid is absolutely getting after it up, up on top with, with a lot of ball pressure. I think he's well rested. He hasn't played a whole yeah. lot. I think they're trying to keep the ball in Covert's hands, too. Oh, yeah, I agree. They, yeah, he's probably the one they want to foul right now. Yep. See if he can make the free throws. Covert's acting like he got hurt when he got hit up front. It's all bent over. And he got the go. first. Big, big free throw there. Even bigger one coming up. Those, or, those two did not resemble the first two we watched him shoot. No, we didn't. No, they did not. Good for him. Yep. Stepping up, making some big free throws right there. Brownstown didn't uh, apply that three full court pressure, but Orleans have been doing very well beating it. Oh, great Another set. Cut. Yeah, nice set. Get to the corner. Oh, that was a good look. Yep, yep great look. Going to be a jump ball here. Brownstown's possession. Great, great set, great execution. Just, you know, one thing you can't control is the shot going in. Yeah, they got exactly right. what they wanted. Hey, Courtney, thanks for tuning in from Illinois. Full court pressure here for the, for the Bulldogs. He almost traveled. Yeah, and I, and, and I believe he was, I, I mean, I, we got a little tough angle, but might have been out of bounds as well. That right foot was really close to the line. Looked like Coach Stroud might have agreed with whatever you two saw. I don't know. Yeah, yeah that's, right. that's right. I'll say it. Uh, Garrison mm -hmm. knocks down the first. That makes it that... Uh, Two possession game with that four point. Oh, 
in and out. Oh. Owens got to go fast. He does have a timeout if he scores. Both teams have one timeout. So get a quick bucket, get a timeout. See what happens. That's right. Definitely does, do not need a three. Down four. No, definitely not in this position. There's a quick shot. Ooh. Much needed. There you go. That was a very easy shot for him, the way he scored on the one at the end of the fourth quarter. Yeah. That was very well contested. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of confidence there. Coach Stroud showing in his player. He just drew up that play. Missed one in the corner, but goes right back to him there um, and, and knocks down a shot. Making a two-point two point game. We're into, so are you okay with him shooting the two from 16 feet versus the three? Yeah. I'm up. As two long as he two, makes it. Two possession <laughs> game. Good <laughs> point. Yeah, exactly. He but, made it. <laughs> but that's – we know throughout the course of the game and, to, you know, like the play that just was ran before for him – um, that's a kid. They were yeah, taking the shot. So, it. And it was a quick quick look. You know, it's a two-possession game. Take whatever the first good look you get. All right. Uh, that was Orleans' last timeout. Okay. Does does Brownstown have any timeouts left? He has the one that uh, he got from the overtime. Left, yeah. I bet he takes it at some point. He took all five of the first four quarters. Why wouldn't he pick this one? <laughs> Um, I would, I would, I would venture to guess that, you know, if, if the Braves could get the ball inbounded here, get fouled, go to the line, and make a couple free throws, that he might use it, utilize that last time out there to, to yeah. talk to his players about what to do at the end of the game. He's, uh, he's talking to one of the officials now, probably saying if he gets in trouble. There's the. That's probably why he was letting him know. Yep. We get it in. Gonna get the push to cause him to go out of bounds. Going to be on 21. Sanders his first. How's Pendleton at the line tonight? Pendleton, I think he's missed one one tonight, but once again, a really solid solid free throw shooter. I'm not giving out any percents. I don't want to jinx him. Brown sounds not putting anyone in the lane. Makes it first. And like like Aaron said earlier, this is the big one. Make it a, a yeah, two possession it a game. Two possession game with yes. nine seconds to go. And no timeouts for oh, both no. oh. Got to go quick. Oh, no. Over and back. Uh, tough, tough. I hate to see the up. game yeah. end on that. Yeah. It's, it's not, gonna, over, not over yet. It's not gotta, over. Got to take it out of bounds they made yet. That. I hate to see the game possibly end on that. Yeah. And we've got a timeout Coach here. takes his final timeout. Told you. This one's the, this one's a tough one as a coach, guys. You know you your last really time tough. out. And you gotta you, get the you, ball in play. You, you want to make sure you, you, you want to make sure you get the ball in bounds, so you're drawing up that play to do that. Uh, I like to think that a lot of times this is a this is the chance you ha you have your out of bounds go to play to get the ball in bounds. I, I call that set and try to save my time out there if I need it on the on a close to a five second call. You know it's uh, both varsity squads are out watching the end of this game. You don't see that very often. No, no. I, I think that they're probably juices amped up a little bit and ready to get on the floor. And, you know, you get know you also have senior night, so well, that's they're, they're, well. they're, their game's going to be delayed a little bit. Yeah, it's already 7.25. Yeah. So then you got probably, what, 15 minutes of senior stuff so and then 20 minutes of warm-up and – but you guys have definitely been, you, those of you who have tuned in, definitely seen a really, really good JV basketball <laughs> yes. game here. It's in, it's in overtime with yeah. you know, three seconds left. Still still anybody's ball game. The Braves lead by three with the basketball. Um, just hopefully they get the basketball in bounds and, and you know, either run out the clock or get fouled and go to the line and seal, seal it at the line. Nobody's guarding the basketball. Which has. Good, good try to double, double Pilton. And that will do it. Great, great win for, for Coach Coach Leedsman and the Braves, you know, to finish their season. And a really tough, heartbreaking loss there for the, the Bulldogs. But just, you know, kudos to both teams. 
effort, you know, was definitely not in question there. It was just a great JV basketball game. Hope yeah. Coach Leishman doesn't forget that he has to come up here now. <laughs> we'll, send, we'll send him a message. Yeah, we, we may wait till after the senior record now because I'm sure they're going right. to want to they should. get this going pretty quick. But again, everybody, just thanks so much for tuning in. And again, stick around. We do have senior recognition tonight uh, for the seniors here at Brownstown Central High School. Uh, we will definitely show that. But uh, again, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have everybody subscribe to the YouTube channel. And guys, just want to say thank you. That that was a really good basketball game. Great job on the call. And uh, appreciate working with you guys. I hope we have just as a just as a good one. That, yes. Yeah, Aaron, once again, just thank you for your time. Um, being a Brownstown guy, I know that there's a lot of people watching and, and people that, you know, couldn't get tickets because it's sold out. They really appreciate this. Um, once again, he's he's volunteering his time. He's not getting paid to do this. Uh, just a great service to, to you know, let fans, let fans watch a great high school basketball game. And we'll let you enjoy the senior night uh, festivities here. Clayton Blackburn, escorted by Ronnie and Adrian Blackburn. Clayton is a four-year band participant and has participated in the National Honor Society, Spellboard, and Science Olympia. After graduation, he will attend Purdue to major in mechanical engineering technology. Reagan Ratliff, escorted by Michael and Michelle Ratliff. Reagan is a four-year band participant and has also participated in National Honor Society, Student Council, German Club, Spell Bowl, and Academic Team. After graduation, she plans on attending Fall State. Bryce Greaser, escorted by Brian and Julie Greaser. Bryce is also a four-year band participant and has participated in tennis, science club, robotics, and spell bowl. After graduation, he plans on attending Indiana University and majoring in pre-med. Madison Edwards and Bradley Edwards. Escorted by Jason and Andrea Edwards. Madison is a four-year band participant and has participated in robotics, student council, German club, academic team, spell bowl, science club, National Honor Society, was a cross-country and softball manager. After graduation, Madison plans on attending Ball State and majoring in architecture. Bradley Edwards, has been a basketball manager for three years and a player for one year. He also participated in cross country, track, German club, sportsman club, and choir. After graduation, Bradley plans on working in the family renovation business. Ladies and gentlemen, your band and go team seniors. Next up, Basketball manager Adam Shockey, escorted by Mark and Misty Shockey. Adam has been a manager for four years, and after graduation, Adam plans on working in the family food business. Basketball player Jacob Arthur, escorted by Jacob is a four-year basketball participant and is currently undecided on his plans after graduation. Carson Darling, escorted by Chris and April Darling. Carson is a four-year basketball participant 
and also participated in the football, baseball, booster club, FCA, Letterman's Club, and National Honor Society. After graduation, he plans on attending Purdue University to major in business management. And Bryce Neal, escorted by Jeff and Shannon Neal. Bryce is a three-year basketball participant. He has also participated in football, booster club, letterman's club. After graduation, he plans on attending Ball State to study architecture. These kids would like to thank these seniors for all of the hard work and dedication to the basketball and band programs over the past four years. You will be greatly missed by the underclassmen and your coaches. Thank you again for making us proud and representing BCHS so well. Ladies and gentlemen, the seniors of 2023. And congratulations to those seniors, Mike. It's always a special moment for for those seniors and the and the parents to go out there and get recognized. I know you've had a couple senior nights yourself already, but uh, it's just a special night for for, uh, for those I, families. And especially uh, taking personal experience, I had a senior in 2020 during the spring season, so that was. That was that was tougher probably on parents as much as the players themselves because they got out of school. So they had that to at least be happy about. That's right. Uh, all three seniors for Brownstown will be starting tonight. So that's always cool when, for them. Yeah, we got to see it last to night at, uh, at BNL where five of the six got to start. I say all three. One's injured, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Neal there. And that's unfortunate. But again, everybody, we're going to take a, a little bit of an extended break here. Probably five or so minutes to, to rest up, get everything set for the uh, varsity game. And then we'll come back and start talking about the big game tonight. Well, we do we have just Coach, saw a great one. We do have Coach Leachman if he hasn't oh, forgotten. Right. Yeah. But he's, he's probably still with the seniors. So, I forgot about that, yeah.
welcome back here. We've got Coach Leedsman here with us. Coach, I'll let Coach, you do the talking oh, here. Well, thanks, Coach. Coach Leedsman, congrats on a great win. Um, you know, a, a, a great high school JV boys basketball game. Yeah. Um, two, we talk about two iconic programs, you know, and two really successful teams. I think their record was 17 and four. I know your record was, you know, 14 and five. 14 and five is, yeah. yeah. We talked about that tournament, but just give us your, your thoughts of the game. Um, just, just give us your thoughts. First off, I told the kids, a couple of the guys after the game, it's probably be the best JV atmosphere you'll ever play in in your life. I, uh, I, I, I said the same comment <laughs> before the game started. Yeah. yeah. I mean, sold out, sold out, you know, and a lot of people came early to get a seat, so we kind of benefited from that. It honestly felt like an away game early, or Lee's got here so early, they had more fans than we had at first. I said, <laughs> almost felt like an away game to start. But uh, back to the game, I just thought, we did a nice job of, we didn't shoot the ball well, but we did a nice job of doing the other things to make sure we to win basketball games. And that's what we talk about this group so much with, is the importance of defending and rebounding and, and just having good possessions. And, uh, the things that you can control, control every night, we did that tonight and it, and it helped. Yeah, I, uh, I thought you made some really good defensive adjustments at the right times as well. You know, especially early on there, Orleans was just really being able to get downhill, get in the lane, and did a nice job of, you know, switching up some two, three in there and, and then changing it up to man. And then I thought your pressure there in the second half, you know, was able to, to get them a little a little weathered a little bit, so to speak. Um, and, you know, they forced them to call a couple timeouts there late. Uh, just made some big plays, you know, a really big rebound there at the end of the game there that, you know, that, that kid shot that you guys miscommunicated there in transition and they got to it ended up being a tough look, but, yeah. you know, those are the chances a lot of times where offense rebounds happen and put backs and you guys were able to secure that. I thought that was really big, a really big rebound. Yeah, the, the big thing with changing up the defense, if you're playing a team like Orleans, they're so good at running their stuff and you've got to find ways to get them out of rhythm and make them uncomfortable. So we wanted to kind of keep them on their heels a little bit and, and mix it up. Uh, and then the other thing too is we had a hard time keeping out of the paint, so we had to keep doing something to contain them a little bit. Yeah, uh, just a, a huge game by by freshman Lane Pendleton, scoring 24 points, um, and you know he he missed a couple. And shooters are going to miss shots, and I know he's a really good shooter. Uh, one in the first half, you know, a great look with with maybe he was just too open. Too open. Um, but guys, I thought did a great job of finding him. Uh, I remember, you know. Uh, Gregory Hutchinson made a great driving kick one, one time on the right wing, right slot area, then he hit a three, and then a, another great possession, you know, late there, um, corner three there in the left the left wing. Yeah, Wayne did a great job of, he, he missed a lot of good looks early, but he put that behind him, and he made big shots when we needed it, and, and he set that big for us. Uh, the play you're talking about where we had the ball, we ran a play, we called timeout about three minutes left, we're down a point. And we wanted to try to get something. They took it away on the out of bounds. And then our guys were real patient. And Greg did a nice job getting <coughs> to the paint, getting to two feet, and made that pass to Lane. And he had a big shot for us. I thought that was that was what we needed uh, more than anything right there. Yeah. Um, you know, and you only had three. I think three guys. I made a comment earlier. Three guys that scored in the in the first half. And I made you know I said he's got to do. I bet sure that Coach Leesman said that we needed some other guys to, to really step up and score, and, and that happened there to start the third quarter. I know that, that Pearson came out and hit a couple shots, and, and uh, Preston Garrison hit a three in there as well, so just just nice to get some other guys involved and, and you know, take, take some of the pressure off Pendleton there uh, early on in the second half. Yeah, I told them before the game, you know, this group gets so caught up in, in offense and scoring on, on, on the board. You know, there's not much we can say because we don't really prepare in JV games, so I just put each kid's name on the board, and I told I wrote two things down next to him that I think they're really good at, that they have to be great at tonight. And, and a lot of it was talking and rebounding and defending. And I told him, I said, I don't care if you missed 25 shots, 10 turnovers, I just want you to compete. Well, then we go into halftime. I thought to myself, like, all right, I'm tired of the, I'm tired of the 25 missed shots. But uh, our guys did a nice job of uh, doing the little things all night and then made shots when they had to that second half. Was there any thought to, um, because you've had this position twice in the game of fouling up three late. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm an anti-foul guy late. Uh, uh, I'm an anti-foul guy late. Obviously, when they make the shot, you, you look back on it and say, man, I wish I would have fouled. It's, it, sometimes it's so hard, especially in a JV game, to get that rebound, the free throw. I mean, there's a lot of push in the back, a lot of, a lot of you know, collisions up there and we didn't rebound real great all night and then honestly I mean 
if, if I knew that was going to be the shot they took, I would have rolled with it still because I thought it was a tough contested shot. It was shot. very well contested. Yeah, yeah. Did a great job not fouling, walking into him. But, I mean, and Dixon, Dixon just made a great and shot. And then the overtime, Dixon took about a 16-footer from about the same spot. Contested, and, yeah. And it made it a two-point game at the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that cuts it two. Yeah. And our guys did a great job setting up to the foul line and hitting their free throws, too. So, yeah, uh, especially, I mean, ship. Greg Hutchinson, I know, the normal 38% free throw shooter, he, 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 and he missed, he missed two, was able to put, you know, talk about putting those stuff behind, that stuff behind him. Yeah. He stepped to the line and, and looked like a 90% free throw shooter <laughs> yeah. on those second two. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think either one of them hit the rim. No, he, he, he made some big plays for us tonight. He played great. Early, early in the game, he was the only reason we were still in the game with his putbacks and just his activity. Yeah. Um, but he, he did hit two huge free throws late. Yeah, and I just want to give you a shout out. I, I know that we, watching the game, go play out there and and Hutchison and, and and you know Garrison both kind of got a little chippy there and, yeah. and you pulled them right out of the game and I just you know I think that that's a staple I, to, of Coach Benner's program and, and the way you guys coach things um, that even though that it didn't get called out there that that wasn't gonna be tolerated I, I thought that just a, you know hopefully a lot of people got to see that yeah. just a, just kudos to you and your and your coaching and, and the way you conduct your yourself and your you expect your players to, to behave the same way and thank I, you and I know as an official we like it when that happens too yeah, and yeah. a lot of coaches do do that so. and, and from that standpoint like you guys said then also from the standpoint those two had played so well they needed to regroup and get their composure back yeah. because they had played too well to lose their emotions like that so uh, it was kind of a for one, really, yeah, yeah. and I thought they, they came back in the fourth quarter, put it behind him, and, and did a good job. All right, thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great win, yeah. great season. Yeah. Go, go get another one right here. We will. Yeah, thank you. And again, want to thank Coach Leachman for uh, coming up and joining us. And guys, I said we'd take about a two-minute break, and then we'll come back and start talking about this one. Yep. All right, we'll Sounds be back good. in about two minutes. Welcome back here to Brownstown Central High School as we get set here for 2A number six, Brownstown 
as they host 1A number two Orleans and looking forward to a good one. My name is Aaron Harrell here with uh, coach Brandon Allman. He's the head varsity girls basketball coach here at Brownstown Central. And Mike Wright, he is a uh, varsity official and that is a teacher here at Brownstown uh, Central Schools. But guys, again, th thanks for uh, joining me. We had a great JV game. And uh, again, looking forward to a really, really good basketball game tonight. I think great was an understatement. That was, yeah. that was fun to watch. Um, yeah, we have six, number six and number two. Um, yes. Very diverse styles of basketball. We got one team that wants to get up and run and get the score up, and then we got one that wants to keep the tempo down. Um, it'll be interesting if which one prevails, and if it doesn't, I think we're going to be in for a uh, another close ball game. Yeah, I think we're definitely in for in for a treat here. Um, uh, that's a great way to describe it: a clash of styles. Brownstown, I believe, is going to really want to get up and down the floor, um, and you know, Orleans is is going to definitely have to control the pace of the basketball game uh, they don't they don't want to get it attract me with with Brownstown in my opinion if you look if you trust John Harrell sites and who wouldn't um, Brownstown six in scoring 69.68 in the state six in the state in offensive and then you have Orleans number one in the in points allowed at 35.86 now what's also interesting in that is number three in the state is Providence at 39 so are we getting a possible sectional preview? Yeah, I, I think so. Both teams, a lot of the same style. Very physical, man-to-man -man defense. Uh, Providence will do a lot more switching. I, I don't know if for sure if, if Orleans is, is going to do as much switching. Um, but, yeah, just very, very similar styles in those two programs. Uh, common foes, uh, Brownstown's 5-0. and oh, Orleans is 4-1. and one, And that one just happened. Uh, New Albany. Now the difference was uh, Orleans played New Albany before Christmas and down at New Albany just like Brownstown did. Lost 50 to 42. So December is an eternity ago. Yeah, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is. It is an eternity ago. And you're, you're reading off some of those stats, uh, the scoring average there. You know, in Brownstown, what stands out some to me is, you know, that scoring average has got hurt a little bit. Uh, you know, Jack Benner was was out and had missed a couple games. Um, and, and they played a good several four, five, six games it was uh, without their starting point guard in, in Parker Heyman. And then uh, you know, they, they went to went to your guys' hometown there, Bedford, uh, and played a really, really good Bedford North Lawrence boys basketball team. and. You know, Bedford was able to do kind of what I expect Orleans to do, uh, try to control the tempo, and you got to have great guard play to do that, and, and I believe Orleans has that. Um, you mentioned the um, going to Bedford North Lawrence. We had a um, five games where Brownstown Central scored 81 points or more in a row, and it started with the game that was played over a week and a half because of. Jack shattering the backboard. There's three comments on it. Three. We got three. I'm sure we'll get to we'll get All to right. five and a half, like you said. So he came back. That was played on a Monday. Broke the school record with 48, 48 points, and an 85 to 74 win. And the next night, went down to Austin and broke it again. Yeah, with 51, 51 points. Uh, that's that's a, scored scored that's what 99 in two, in two 90, days. Yeah, 99 or whatever it was 98 in two that's days, whatever. Because I think um, people in Bedford were starting to get a little nervous that Damon's record is going to be in jeopardy if he's scoring 99 points every <laughs> two games. So then you know Charlestown put up 81, Court and 84, Columbus East 92. Then they went to Bedford North Lawrence and it was basically a slugfest. Um, I was there. Aaron was on the game. One of the biggest crowds for a boys game I had seen at Bedford North Lawrence in a long time. It was a, it was a fun game to watch. I sure wouldn't want to officiate it. Um, I think uh, it uh, it was a good test for them. Um, but you mentioned the injuries. Was how many players did Brownstown have out when uh, we played Lagodi in the? Uh, North Davies tournament. They were they were without you know both both their their point guard and their vocal leader Parker Heyman and and Jack was out as well down there. Um, 
did so, indoor Davies. Now we're talking about December. Oh, sorry. I was talking about the Black Hall game there. Uh, yeah. Jack, Jack played in the in the Lagoda game, but he was he was sick. Um, he That's was right. not at full strength. I knew it was something like that. Um, really gutted it out though, uh, and had a stretch, uh, 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 less than a minute stretch of some of the you know the best basketball. I think he went on like a it was almost Reggie Miller esque. Uh, when he went on a like a 12-0 run on his own to, to really get separation there. I mentioned the Lagoda game because they did prevail by 12, 57 to 45, and just about a month ago, Orleans had a four overtime battle with Lagoda, and that was I was actually on that game, but that was just a fun game to also be a part of. Um, so there's another another opponent to compare. Other common opponents was Mitchell. Salem and North Harrison. Um, you mentioned before the JV game, the coaches. We got Tom Bradley and Dave Benner. Um, 49 years of coaching between the two. And you know, I got how many wins? I got to get out my calculator. Um, to I, I thought I'd already done this, but over you know, 700, 819 wins between uh, the between, two, between the two of them. They still can't catch Ar Holmes yet. No, no, they are homes no. trying to get to 900 here. He's probably still going. Yeah, uh, that's just that's just amazing. But you know, here, here's the thing. To me, you're talking about Tom Bradley, who has been at Orleans for 24 years. Dave Benner, who has been at Brownstown for 25 years. That's it. That's unheard, unheard of these for days. the most part. Yeah. These, yeah, these yeah, days. Right. Um, to be at one to be at one school. We mentioned J.R. Holmes. You know, almost 900, but. And he's at Bloomington South. We didn't tell people where he's at. They did not know. He's at Bloomington South, of course, but started at Mitchell, I believe, was where he got to start. Tunnelton. So, Tunnelton. Tunnelton, that's right, and then Mitchell. Yeah. You know, so a couple, three different schools there where these guys have been loyal. Um, it's just something you don't see a lot of yeah, these That's these a big days. shout out to my mom. My mom graduated Tunnelton High School. Yeah. The Indians. They're not there anymore, that's right. Uh, the Coach Bradley. I think they're watching. So We know Coach Benner was, is a brave. Do we know Coach Bradley? Did he go to Orleans? I'm sure yeah, someone I, will answer that question I, if we I, don't know. I, I yeah, don't. let us know in the comment section if, if he went to Orleans. Yeah, I want to say he did not, but I didn't get to see that that, that Indy Star article that was just written by Kyle Niederrip there. Um, I never did get to see it. I it didn't was, either. It, it was a lock. It was one of those lock ones, and I don't have that subscription. So um, if somebody gets that and wants to share that with us, that would be great too because I know I heard really good things about that article. Uh, they do the starting lineups first here, followed by the national anthem. Okay, all right. We, yeah, we do we do things a little bit different around here. That's okay. <laughs> well, let's enjoy the starting lineups. And it's going to be a little different for Brownstown. They're going to start their two seniors.
Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a country with freedoms many others are not afforded. At this time, we ask you to please rise and place your hand over your heart as we honor this great nation and our troops serving around the world as Blake Hackman sings our national anthem. Well, we talked about the coaches. What, what about that national anthem? That was awesome. I couldn't Four. find where was the seat. Right, right over here beside us. Okay. Um, Blake, Blake Aspen, um, long time uh, ag FFA teacher here at Brassett Central High School. Um, cannot say enough about him and what he does here, but what, what a performance. We had two veteran coaches on the bench, and we got three veteran officials that's been around just about as long. We've got Brad Dishman, Mark Holtz, and Michael Slavin from the Evansville area. Good crew to have on a big game like this. How about some basketball, guys? Let's do it. Let's go. Tip controlled by the Braves. Oh, it looks just like the JV offense. Cross court. Fade away. Little step back, short. Tough, tough shot tough to start shot, the game. Yeah. That's Alston under on the post. Great job using the body to get an open shot. He's a get really good shot. player for them. And he's a junior. Yeah, I know their scout report. I mean, he's very active, great motor, just an energy kid. Nice clean block. I don't know which one of those two or both of them got it. I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know who got credit for that one. We don't have to keep track of blocks, do we? No, 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 no. no. Everything's unofficial up here. Every, every, that's the good part. That's that is the good correct. part about being up here is, <laughs> is we don't have to worry about uh, being official. We can guess at everything. Oh, Heyman inbound there, gets it in. I, I'm going to guess that Chase Coomer, number 33 for the Braves, doesn't get too many three-point looks, uh, shooting almost 50% or around 50% on the year from three. 50, 55%, sorry, above 50%. Benner with the floater, got it. Carter Allen was defending him man-to-man. -man. He's 5'10", Jack 6'5". That's... That's asking a lot. That is asking a lot, especially if he's going to defend him one-on-one -on -one with no help. I bet we're going to start seeing help at some point if 
he can start uh, scoring on. Braves are active on defense as well. Uh, great. Oh, wow. great. great defensive play right there. I know you good. couldn't see it, but great, great hands great. by Arthur yeah. there, yep. To force a turnover. Looks like they were trying to post Austin up once again. Quick substitution. Colby Hall into the game for Darlidge. And a, and a normal st normal starter for the Braves. Correct. Now, for those who aren't used to seeing Brownstown, <laughs> can you explain why your six foot five guy is playing point guard? That's uh, why, right there. Yeah, that's exactly, <laughs> that's exactly right. Uh, just you know, you got when you got a special talent, you got to get the ball in his hands as much as possible. I mean, you're going to see Parker Hamer run the point a lot, but yeah, just a, a special talent. You know, I've been around the game quite a few years, and he is the greatest shooter that I've been able to be around in person. Um, and it, it just comes from countless hours in the gym. We talked about that earlier, but just like on a on a Sunday evening in here, there night. I mean, my son came in and was able to rebound for him on a Sunday evening. Um, just uh, that just talks about the time and dedication he puts in. Orleans being patient on offense. Yeah, you know, a well-coached team like Orleans, they're they're not going to get rattled. You know, Jack's hit a couple a couple shots to start the game here. They're going to do what they do and and stay with their game plan. That was Blake Love for three. Deep three that was a deep Love. three. I know we have a we have somebody watching, right? Nephew or something of of uh, Love yes. that commented earlier. Yes, from Illinois. Jack from the volleyball line, but Braves <laughs> will maintain possession. Uh, the Orleans faithful, which is right on that side of the basket, did not care for <laughs> that call. Ooh, near near steal gamble. Ooh, Ooh. Man, uh, good read. Jump, jump ball. ball jump Great ball, offense jump rebound. Ball. Yep. yep. And, and, and Mike, you talked you talked about the officiating. Um, a great job there by Holtz, you know, getting in there right away and not letting that escalate. Just Absolutely. Two guys just fighting for the basketball. Both had rights to it, and uh, that was a great, great jump ball. Neither one wanted to give it up. Nice defense, rebound Benner. Pushing it up the floor. And that's what Brownstown yep. wants to do, right? Absolutely. They, want to run. they would that, prefer the score be in the 70s and 80s. Yep. And if those would stop going in and out, that might happen. But you know. <laughs> Bryce Jones being patient, looking for a play from Coach Bradley. Gives it off to Allen. Looks like Austin looked on a set of pick. Will he roll? Oh, he did not. Somebody got a shoulder over there. Yeah. That was Benter. Got a foul here. First foul of the game. Got to be on Austin. Austin has the responsibility of guarding the 6-6 Kobe Hall. <coughs> Near steal, which left Ooh, the great. lane open. Good follow, rebound, and the basket. And that, that foul's also on Austin, his, his second. As a coach, that's got to be frustrating first. The offense misses the re misses an easy shot, and then one of your better players gets a foul just because the shot didn't go in and the rebound was was yeah, missed. Just, just a great effort by Arthur, um, and you're going to notice that that that's what he brings to our, this basketball team is just a lot of toughness, loose balls. I mean, he's going to be on the floor after him. Uh, he does a lot of the dirty work for the Braves. Tipped rebound came out to Orleans. It seemed like the last couple of years I've seen more rebounds tipped towards yeah. the backcourt instead of. Oh, nice Very pass. Oh, that's. Did he travel? <laughs> no, he does. Yeah. 
2,200 people in this building thought he traveled. But <laughs> 2,700. Well, I think there's four or 500 on this end oh, that yeah, thought you're otherwise. Right, you're, right. you're a math teacher. You did that math pretty yeah, quick yeah. in your head, right? Yes. <laughs> we'll go with that. All right, who we got? Graves. He came in the game when uh, Austin got his second foul. And a foul, the foul on Coomer. Nate Graves. Might as well give him a first name since it's the first time he's in the game. And make it, make it an impact right away. I mean, that's, you know, you're one of your better players goes, goes to the bench early and, you know, bench play is, is I think bench play is going to be cru be really big, I think, for Orleans. Ryland Crocker for nice Orleans. Is dish. Three pointer for Heyman. Ryland Crocker is going to change. Crocker is going to check in the next dead ball. Um, I think you said this earlier. Heyman had 12, 12 three pointers. 12 threes. Uh, I believe that was in the Charlestown game. You know, broke our broke broke Jack Venter, his own teammate. It's record there at 11. He had 11 against Austin last year. Love with the miss from deep. Arthur with the rebound ahead to Coomer. Good block out. That's a, that's weak. a good, good, really good shot there for the Braves. Good weak side block out. Um, but, you know, just another you know, comment when he got interviewed after after hitting 12 threes in the game, he, he immediately said he hopes Benner gets 13 in the next game. Um, that's what you want out of your leader. Not to bring up Purdue basketball, but you remember the um, when Purdue got beat by IU and Zach Eady took the microphone away from Ooh, Brandon Smith. Smith, same yeah. thing. Yeah. Just team basketball. Benner for three. Nice. nice. Put back by Hall. Coach Bradley, seen enough there. That's the uh, offensive rebounds have that's, that's been, been the difference, difference in the ball game. You're, you're exactly right. Two um, minutes to go. And the, and the, the really tough thing for, for Coach is the Braves have gotten some really good looks. I mean, Jack Benner is not going to keep missing those shots. Those are the ones you got to make sure you secure and go the other way with, not give up two points on putbacks. Right. I had a question here from Matt Hoosier. Um, Coomer, is that 55% uh, on the year for that, three? That is correct. He's 57 out of 103 on the year, shooting 55%. Yeah, that's a great question, Matt. And, then again, all those uh, out there watching, we almost have a little over 700 probably watching right now. Um, we will try to interact with the questions or comments as we can. But uh, appreciate everybody tuning in right now. Aaron, I'm, I'm going to guess that, that might be a, a former Hoosier graduate, uh, Matt Sterling, who would be around your age, I bet. Okay. I, I, I'm, guess, I'm taking a guess there. but During that timeout, um, Jacob Arthur was getting some blood removed from his uniform by the trainer. They're still looking at him. And Caden, Caden Gwynn has entered the lineup. And that's who it was. Good call. I believe that was partially blocked. I was getting ready to say the same thing. I hope so. Threes up. Another weak side rebound yeah. for the Braves. Another three. Well, that's that should be that should be Braves ball. Look like another substitution for Orleans. Number eleven, Hunter Williams. Entering the game for Nate Graves. Hey, thanks, Dad. Thanks, uh, thanks for the comment, and uh, hopefully the kids are doing well tonight. <coughs> thanks for watching them. Little wing ball screen here, and flare on the opposite side. And just knowing the knowing the scouting report, uh, number ten is a, a kid that we, you know, the uh, Ryland Crocker there that can absolutely get no looks. He is a dead eye three point shooter for for Orleans. Threes up, and there's that tip out rebound. I think. Benner back into the game. I didn't even know he was out of the game. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Coach, Coach Benner does a, a good, a really good job of 
of getting him some some breaks, even if it's just a 30 second you know break here or there. Um, I'm sure, it happened during the timeout. It did. A little option play there. Jack Jack had the opportunity there to go go low or high. Shows the low road. I believe the Braves are going to hold for one here. Stagger double high ball screen for Benner. Got it back. And he will head to the line with 2.5 seconds to go. Foul there on 11, Hunter Williams, his first. Caden Gwynn's going to come back into the game after this first free throw. Hey, Richard, thanks for the comment. For the uh, watching from Arizona tonight. Double zero. Went two of 12 at Jennings County, and the opposing team cheered <laughs> on threes. That's a good one. <laughs> well, there you're talking about. Jackson going to get a little bit more of extended break. Braves up eight. Oh, what but if, if it goes? Great look oh, there. Great, great, look. great execution on the out of bounds play there with two and a half seconds left, just off the back of the rim. At the end of one, Braves lead the Bulldogs 13 to 8. We're going to take a break. We will be back. Welcome back here to Brownstown Central High School and the pit. Again, the Braves lead 13 to 5. The uh, first quarter, Orleans, I think I would feel not too bad being down only eight. Brownstown did not shoot the ball well. Your best players on the bench with two early fouls. Just got to get your offense going. Get some rebounds. Yeah, and that's that. The, Bra the Braves are just winning every loose ball battle right now. Benner, long three. He got it. Um, of course, from the volleyball line, but you know, I, it's almost like a free throw for him. It's just if he's uncontested that far out, and a steal by Benner. Great look. Sheffer into the game at the quarter break. Gets in the scoring column. Micah Sheffer. You know, and another, uh, not, but just a great find there by, by Benner. His court vision, the court awareness is just, it, just amazing to watch. Sheffer's going to get the foul. His I'll first. I'll send Rylan Crocker to the line. And I think that was all we were talking about earlier. Did I, the dead eye shooter? Micah made sure to run him off the three-point line and just, you know, end up committing a foul to put a kid in the line. Yeah, we officially went international. We've got, uh, and I apologize if I mispronunciate your name, but it's uh, Edu uh, watching from uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Orleans graduate, class of 97. That is awesome. So the traveling trophy has been moved. <laughs> Brazil, thank right. you for tuning in. Blake Love into the game for Orleans. Colby Hall back in for Brownstown. And the 19-7 game. Post up. Good find by Jack again. 
That's oh, a great, great block. Great, great block. block. That was gutsy by Austin with two fouls already on him. Yeah, and the Braves, Good for him. The Braves going right at him right there in the post. Nate Graves coming in for Orleans, so that third foul doesn't happen. Good, good, good substitution there by Coach Bradley, I think. Yeah, he realized they were going after him. Yep. Benner baseline finds the open Sheffer. He passes it. That's one thing I've noticed watching them. This is my second game watching Brownstown. Is they pass the ball so well. They yeah. do. Yeah, I mean, the ball took literally maybe one bounce that whole possession there, and it got to side to side three different times there. It's not that they do it. Nice shot. 21. That was Blake Love. He's, that's his second or third three. Second, second three. It's not just a Sheffer again. Feeling it. Yeah. They do it so quickly. The defense can't react. Palming call. That call's not in the rule book. Uh, palming? Carrying the ball. Carrying, carrying the basketball. Ball. Double dribble? It's either double dribble or travel, right? It should be. <laughs> Why do we need all these signals? <laughs> I, I agree. Because <laughs> that's uh, what it is. <laughs> Yeah, when you either hang on to it too long and you walk with it. Or you, or you dri dribble has ended and you're wanting to do it again. Yeah, exactly. Pretty good defense. Great step back look there. That was great defense. That He forced a great player to make a tough shot. That was Ian Hall on the defense. Good pick by Ian Hall. Love will take the three-pointer if you give it to him. Oh, that's the second time Benner's been on the ground tonight off the screen. By design or by flopping or what did you say? I'm not watching it. No, I think it was oh. just like right there. Things could great. get interesting. Great, great look for, for Coomer there in the, in the corner three. I know I said he's 55%, but... I bet he's shooting about 70% from those two corners because when he, he gets an open look in the corner, it's going in. That foul's on Jake Arthur. His first team's third. And he's out of the game. And I think that's Darledge that just went back in for him. Correct. Looks like. Hey, I don't know if this is true or not, but we got guys from watching Antarctica, Philippines. I don't know if that's true or not. Some guys jail cell. So. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in anyways. We appreciate it. Hopefully you're enjoying yourselves and enjoying the stream. Oh. Fade away jumper. Great great defense by Heyman. That, that's probably one of the few times that we'll really see Orleans, I think, really be impatient there. That was one of the quicker shots for them. Well, they can't let this game get too far away from them before they have to get out of their comfort zone, but I don't think we're to that point yet. There you go. That's Love with the steal. Oh, tough shot. As a coach, that's where I'm preaching. You, you know, that's a really tough shot off balance. Get, get to two feet. Old school jump stop there and, and power. Most likely you're either going to get fouled or go line. Turn around there by Hall. Browns down quickly back on defense. You know, this isn't a knock on Brownstown, but, you know, their style of play, you know, if you're able to get a few stops in a row, I mean, you're going to, the Brownstown's going to take some quick, quick, tough shots. Um, you just got to make sure you're really efficient on the offensive end here and try to claw your way back into this game. Nice, nice Bryce start. Jones right there. We've got a timeout, Brownstown, 30-second timeout. 4-13 left to go in the first half, 22-10. But again, everybody, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, they said uh, Eduardo uh, was a foreign exchange student at Orleans. So awesome to see, awesome to have everybody joining us tonight. What's our schedule for halftime? I think we're going to talk to uh, Todd Brown, All one right. of our sponsors tonight. So definitely want to thank Todd Brown. <coughs>
Let's talk some girls basketball. We haven't done that. We, we talked, said we were going to. We will do that too. Southern half of the state has a chance, good chance for a sweep. They do. Four, four really good Southern Indiana girls basketball teams. Yeah, state finals tomorrow. I will be heading up for the 3A and 4A games. So we're going to watch Corden play. Nice drive. And a, a rare, a rare two-point bucket from Coomer. Bob, that's awesome. Thanks for tuning in from the Philippines. That's that's just awesome. We're seeing different defense from Brownstown that almost turned into a turnover. And it did turn into a turnover. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they had some open guys. Uh, he was definitely open underneath. Um, Graves was that uh the one three one half court trap might might be the Braves best defense I know they went to that quite a bit against New Albany um that's when they were able to get some separation I think uh Aaron can contest to that when they did that to Bedford North Lawrence that changed the entire tempo of the Stars offense nice little jump hook in the lane that just doesn't go down Two turnovers in a row. We got a three on two. That's Whoa. gonna be an over and back. Yeah. Well, we've seen three turnovers in a row. Number 11 in the game for the Bulldogs, Hunter Williams. Replacing Nate Graves. Sheffer back in for the Braves, replacing Coomer. Looks like it's a 1-3-1 setup again. <coughs> Let's see if Orleans can manage it better than they have the last two trips down the floor. And, and, and what's a little unusual about the way that, that Coach Benner sets us up, you know, you have your point guard as the as the guy at the nail hole. Uh-oh. I'm not sure what people were waiting for on that one, because that is the end of the floor that has been shattered twice, if you are unaware. Is that four? <laughs> That's four. There's four. Um, yeah, you're not going to see a miss like that very often. <laughs> I mean, people were already in awe as he was at the free throw yeah, line. And, and one thing is they let him do it. Uh, maybe he was expecting some. Love, he's, he's got the green light from three point. Yeah. That's we'll one stay. offensive rebound. That Orleans basketball. And that end of the gym didn't and make it. And we may it. have a, uh, a, a reversal a here. Reversal We're talking here. about it. And and back to the 1-3-1, one, one, you know, we, we put our point guard at the, at the nail hall area in the middle, which is usually a spot where your post player goes. Um, uh, but Coach Benner put a lot of trust in his point guard there to, to be able to defend in the post. Love. Got the inbounds pass. Braves went back to man. I assume that's because it was off an of out-of-bounds play. Yep, yep. You know, we, we got off to nice a really, pick. really strong start. Yeah, he's going to be things, shooting two. Yeah, go ahead. Things is, no, you're good. No, um, he will be shooting two. Just a, a really, you know, a law in, in the Braves' offense. We missed some shots and a couple turnovers. Um, once again, it just allowed a, allow Orleans to kind of hang around right here and that was Colby Hall's first. Chance to get it back down under single digits here. If they could, nope. You know the next couple possessions. Coomer's back into the game. Nope, he came in for the wrong guy. <laughs> Sheffer's supposed to come out. Miscommunication there. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> mm, Orlean substitution. Good. Graves is going to re-enter the game, replacing Williams. You know, and, and I know Austin's a really good player for them. According to scout report, Ian Hall, number 12, is their, their best player, and that's his first points of the game there, that free throw. So Bray's been able to keep him off the, out of the scoring column. They kept him out of the scoring column, and Austin off of the, out of the game. Three-pointer for Kuma. Yeah, they really need, uh, they really need Austin in the game. <coughs> 
They really need for Brownstown to get out of this 1-3-1-2. One, one, <laughs> Great kick there. Great. Yeah. Ian Hall. Talk that was a big bucket. Talk all the time about, you know, when you're struggling and having, you just got to get to the free throw line and see one go in. And he, he saw one go in and Ooh, near steal. makes a three on next possession. Nice move down low. Good quick yeah. move by Hall. The pace has picked up here a little bit in the last couple minutes. Nice spin move. Just left it short. Heyman with the rebound, pushing up the floor. <coughs> Ooh. Oh, uh, Tried to do it behind the back. Just Coach was Benner not there. is not, not real thrilled with that pass. Yeah. Park, Parker wasn't in my classroom when I was showing Jason Williams highlights uh, yesterday. He so. could pass the ball a little oh, bit. Oh, just a little bit. Uh, you know, I, too, I like to always tell my kids when I show them those videos that that's who I pattern my game after. This, um, right. <laughs> this defense isn't going to allow for Orleans to settle for one shot in the quarter and truthfully, well. A really, really bad decision there by, yeah. by Allen. Uncharacteristic of him to, to turn the ball over. And, it, and something that's really uncharacteristic of this Orleans team, they do not turn the ball over. And, and I know that they are reaching somewhere around double digits, I believe. You're not keeping track of that? I was, and then I quit. <laughs> Tough down low. Yeah. Yeah. Good pass. Just this, you, and you were talking about BNL had some issues with this too. It's just a lot of a lot of length out there. Yes, um, you got six foot six at the top, six foot six on a wing, six foot four on a wing, you know, and then you put five or six foot in the middle, six foot point guard, and then six two, six three down on the bottom. It's just a lot of length that that doesn't allow you much vision. That's for sure. Wow, that is a heck of a way to end the first half. And that's. That's what 67, 7,000 people came to see right there. A great feed. You know, Parker Heyman turns it over there right before the end of the quarter, but then, you know, gets it back with a great oop to, to Jack there to finish out the half. Yep. The Braves have doubled up the Bulldogs. It's 33-16. Yeah, let's take a break. Then we'll, we'll uh, get Todd on here and then uh, talk to him as one of our sponsors. But uh, what an end to that first half. Great alley-oop. We'll be back in just a couple minutes.
right, welcome back, everybody. We got a, uh, another special guest on with us right now. And that is going to be one of our sponsors here, and that is uh, Todd Brown of Brown Family Insurance. Todd, are you with there? Yeah, I'm here. You guys, uh, hey, you did a, you're killing it tonight, guys. Great job. Well, we appreciate it so much. It's, uh, it's a fun game to do, obviously, when you've got uh, good basketball going, uh, going both ways. So, uh, Todd, explain to, uh, explain to us who you are about Brown Family Insurance and, and all that good stuff. Well, um, <clears throat> so Todd Brown, and um, so we started Brown Family Insurance here not that long ago, actually. Uh, Charles Self kind of gave us a, a shot at selling some insurance in Brownstown, and it's evolved uh, over the years to Brown Family Insurance, um, and we sell uh, auto, home, life, and, and health insurance, and uh, yeah, we, we just are uh, right there in Brownstown. Uh, any, anything uh, as far as insurance needs you need, just stop in and see us. And uh, we've, we've had super, super great clients and um, more family and friends has helped us out with this whole on taking, uh, coming, uh, you know, being a, a former teacher and then trying to get into the insurance world. We've had nothing but great support from everybody, uh, our church family, our friends, uh, our, and just everybody. It's been a delight. Um, you know, selling insurance there, there in Brownstown. Yeah, it's really good. I'm I'm a client of yours, uh, so uh, you have I, to. Your yeah, family, that's, Aaron. That's right. Family, <laughs> family comes you first. Have no right? choice. That's right. That's right. But uh, uh, again, it's 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 no pressure, no no pressure sales. If you are looking for an insurance quote, give give Todd a call. Him, his team over there, as you can see him on your screen right now. Uh, but uh, his team over there that does a wonderful job and uh, very easy to work with and and all that so if you are looking for a quote yeah. but uh, yeah I've got I've got a great crew uh, Stacy Osborne she's been with me for about four years and then Kristen Stuckwish, she's been with us for about uh, 40 days <laughs> and, and then uh, my wife Jamie oh. sorry to interrupt Todd I was gonna say and, and former Lady Bray basketball player Kristen that Stuckwish. is right. That that is right. She she's a still hardworking uh, young lady. Yeah, well, she, she does a great Purdue job for us. She was in the Purdue hat, but hey, <laughs> we, we got to start supporting Jack around that's there. You know, right. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and, and then uh, and I can't forget my wife. Uh, she she has been teaching for the last 21 years, and she's going to be full time with us. Um, for, for forever, so so her and I are stuck together in that office for a really long time. Yeah, well, you hope it's forever, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. There might be some trying days. <laughs> that's right. But that's yeah, right. it's it's been it's been a blessing to to our family, and uh, like I said, we we cannot thank our clients enough, and uh, it, it's just been overwhelming. Actually, um, when you get into something new like this, you don't know what to expect, but. Um, Brownstown always always comes through for you, you know. So it, it, it's been it's been great. Yeah, it's 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 a wonderful thing what, what you're doing. I know you, tonight you're supporting us uh, with, with the live stream, and and I know you're you're getting back in the, in the coaching a little bit um, here. Oh uh, my! Yeah. yeah. So uh, you're going to be a, a a busy man. Uh, but uh, again, we can't thank you enough for for the support for the live stream tonight. Cool. Hey, uh, I want I want to thank you guys too, uh, AWH Media, and 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 Brandon and Mr. Wright. I mean, it's like kind of like the game day crew. You guys kind of got a little bit of everything. You got the rules specialist there. That's right. And uh, yeah, I, I think we could maybe get Barry Hall to be our lead corso. You know, and put the, the head on at the, at the at the beginning of the show. Maybe that's something uh, in, in the future we can do. That, that'd but be, uh, that'd but be really cool. it is it is it. Yeah, that would be. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, you guys are doing a great job, and it's just, it's awesome. I, I just, it wasn't that long ago I was uh, trading VHS tapes, and it's amazing. I can be sitting in my living room watching, you know, a Brownstown High School basketball game with commentating and, and things like that. It's just uh, unbelievable. Yeah, that's that's one thing. You, you, you'll get tickets next year. You, you're a little late getting tickets this year, right? Because it sold out so fast. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, my brother's got mine. So my brother Jamie, he he's been he's yeah, been he taking my spot at all these games. He stopped by and said hi. Yeah, I was gonna say he walked by just a second ago. Yeah, but uh, yeah. again, Todd, we, we can't thank you enough. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, keep working hard. You're doing great things over there, and uh, uh, we, we appreciate you so much. 
Hey, thank you guys. I appreciate it, and uh, hopefully have a great second half here, okay? That's right. Thanks so much for joining us, Todd. Have a great evening. Thanks, Todd. All right, you guys too. All right, bye-bye. Thank you. Okay, instead of list, or talking about the girls, let's take a quick look at the sectionals for Fort Orleans and Brownstown real quick. We'll try to get to the girls before we get off the air. Um, Orleans plays in the Ligoti sectional, and if you're uh, wanting a dream matchup for the championship game, that's the place it's going to be. Reve drew Ligoti, and the winner will play Bar Reeve. Now, Ligoti, uh, I'm sorry, Bar Reeve obviously is defending state champion and has a tremendous tradition, but they're down a little bit, but they're still a dangerous basketball team. And uh, so Ligoti's got the long road there. Springs Valley, uh, Coach Leachman's old school. Uh, that he coached Washington Catholic in game one on Friday game two shows in Orleans and I believe they just played last week um, for the southwestern sectional Henryville and Austin will kick it off on Tuesday it's a seven teamer Brownstown and Eastern will play Eastern Pekin who uh, the Braves just played last Friday uh, they will play game one Wednesday Clarksville and Providence Providence is defending state champion they will play the second game on Wednesday uh, Southwestern will play the winner of the Henryville Austin game, and Brownstown Eastern winner will play Clarksville Providence on Friday. Sectional championship. He's seven o'clock, and we hope we got a few more weeks of Braves basketball. And I think the Bulldogs—they're not going to see a defense, I don't think, in that sectional that they've seen in that last quarter uh, down on the Goatee. But it will be very contested defense. Braves or Bulldogs basketball start the third quarter down 17. I think, I think it's important right here to get get Austin a touch, get him involved. You know, he's been on the bench quite a bit there in the first half, so. Yeah, he had two fouls, right? Yeah, yes. two fouls. That's, That's good. good. Two points. Carter Allen in the lane. 5'10", Carter Allen in the lane. Good for him. Against the trees, right? Yes. <clears throat> Heyman. Jump ball. Got a jump ball. Brazel will maintain possession, and the shot clock will reset to 20. Is that the rule in college? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we talked about that last night. I know Carl Jolman and I have talked about it. Uh, we're not fans. Yeah, we're not either. You know, I had uh, I had the privilege of having uh, Damon Bailey on a stream earlier this year, and um, he is not a fan of it either for, for high school. Just think how many points he might have scored had there been one, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or how many more he scored if he had a three-point line that freshman year? That, oh, oh, there you go. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's goaltending by Benner. That's something that uh, officials That's hard at the high school level, high. we don't see that a lot of. Not, not in, especially at Southern Indiana small school basketball. Right. I'm sure there was a discussion in the locker room, hey, we may have mm -hmm. some above the rim official ball. Who, uh, who got that bucket there? on that goal 10. Orleans. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was 12. Hall, we'll give it to him. If your next question, who's got the foul? It was Carter Allen, his first team's first of the second half. Benner, kick out. Another tapped rebound. I'm telling you, I've been seeing that more and more. And Benner, D3. That's a second from the volleyball line. I don't know how you defend it. I don't think you do. Yeah. You just hope to block hope out and it's misses, not a long yeah. rebound. And a, and a pseudo assist there to, to Darledge on that tip out. Yes. But that could have been two points the other way if it doesn't go back in the ha hands of the Braves. Nice rebound, Benner. Benner. Pushing it up the court. <clears throat> Toomer back to Benner. Benner's, just, too, Benner's too close, so he dishes it off <laughs> i'm just still still a little surprised i, I mean i i can't co i can't question coach bradley i mean just a uh indiana great high school basketball coach and i'm nowhere near his level um but still just defending jack benner you know one-on-one -on -one, no no help no sending the second guy at him very much um I have, he, he's hurt him i mean he's got 16 points right now i have a thought and you can um Lagode has a nice player, Peyton Bledsoe. That is correct. And maybe we're just in, hey, we're preparing for section. No, we've always been preparing for section all week. But has 
we need to think about next week. We're practicing game situation for, I don't want to say not Shoals, but if you get past Shoals and whoever they would play Friday, you're looking at somebody's going to have to guard Bledsoe. So maybe they're just pretending uh, as if Benner is a right a better version of Bledsoe. And yeah, I've talked to a couple coaches, you know, coming into this week being the last week of the year. It's, it's more so of we're preparing for that first yeah. game section. Oh, definitely. It just so happens we play a game, too. De definitely. I know. I mean, I've yeah. been a part of being a part of Coach Benner's staff um, as, as Austin knocks in that second free throw and making his presence known with an offense rebound and, a, and, you know, a put back there to go to the free throw line. But, you know, he, he you know, this is just a game. He, he, his mind since the draw has, has been on, on peaking. And, and Providence and how we're, you know, the, you know, how we're going to win that sectional. Now, now that we just talked about it, they did double team Benner out front there. And it caused it, I don't know if it caused a turnover, but. And, and you talked about showing hands. That, that's, you know, a coaching debate all the time. Are we going to kind of show our hand or do we need to practice something we may mimic in a sectional? Um, great, great, great hands, hands, great, great hustle. hustle. Yeah. Great minds think alike sometimes. Um, but no. back back to the sectional, you're, you're going over, you know, Orleans' is sectional. Co Coach Bradley's won nine sectionals in, in his tenure um, there and one, and one regional title. And that was really back in a really good year um, in 2003. Uh, he had a really nice team that year. But, uh, you know, their last sectional championship is 2015. And, and it's not because they haven't had some good teams there. That is just an absolute loaded sectional when you talk about Bar Reeve and Magody and the likes of those teams in Orleans. Yeah, when they got realigned out of what usually was a Springs Valley or Orleans sectional and got put in the what was traditionally known as sectional 63 is North, like you said, North Davies, who, by the way, was the defending single-A champion, jumping the 3A this year. I think the enrollment pushed them up, and then I think they chose. Yes, they, they chose, they chose to, to move up. Yeah, they did. And that might have been to avoid Linton. And or Brownstown. And I mean, or Brownstown. Yeah, that's if, if we don't know for sure, but yeah. that, that might be the thought there. If we're gonna look ahead and who who wouldn't at this point in time. Linton and Brownstown in the semi state. Yeah, two two high level varsity basketball players that are both going to division one schools. Uh, Benner going to Purdue, and of course um, Joey Hart going to University of Central Florida to to play for former Duke standouts. Is this a quiz? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> stream uh, it, stream it if you know who the UCF coach is. There, there you go. There's a. I'll, I'll leave that out to. <laughs> it's our that, quiz. That's our quiz. Oh, down at UCF. Yes. Yeah, uh, he was he was a manager at IU, right? Nice, nice move. Day. Nice move. Blake Love. No, former Duke great. Oh, uh, man. I'll think of it here in a minute. I said it's going to be on your stream. Somebody's going to know it. Yeah. Or they're going to Google it. Out of the 700 and <laughs> some that are watching right now. Love with the personal foul. His first. His first. There's a, they've been spreading the love with the fouls, the, the haven't they? The coach, Matt, uh, that, that was the question. The Duke player played at Duke. Outside of Austin, well, Austin only has two fouls now, which and is not necessary. Benner will head back to the line. Foul trouble here deep in the third quarter. Dawkins, thank you, Nigel. Yeah, that is correct. Ah. Good job. Nigel with the quick answer there. Does he win a prize? Do, no, 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 no prizes tonight. No, yep. <laughs> Benner got the first. Uh, Chase, Chase Coomer back in for Benner. 16-point game. That's what it was at half time, 17 at halftime. Kind of played in that window. Orleans needs to uh, probably get this in the single digits before the quarter break to nice feel good drive. about themselves. That's a good start there. Carter Allen again inside the paint. And we got a timeout by Brownstown. 
3.34 to go in the third quarter. 39-25, Braves. We're going to take a break here. I think this is a full timeout, so we will take a break. Welcome back here to the pit. Again, want to thank everybody for tuning in. Brownstown leads by 14. See Orleans extend that defense. Yeah, this, this last three minutes here, big big for Orleans to try to, like or like Mr. Wright, like Mike said, to, to try to get it back in a single digits. But Coomer with a mid-range jump shot there. That's twice I've been referred to as Mr. Wright in the last 10 or 15 minutes. Yep, <laughs> yep. Todd did it. Yes. Three on the way short. Uh, rebound. Tough pass. I don't think Brownstown's interested in uh, running clock, are they? They want to continue to run their offense. Yep. Good hustle. Got great. a jump ball. Yep. Great, great hands there by Austin. Great hustle by by both Love and and Arthur to get on the floor there and get a tie up. Uh, well, shout out. Oh. Go ahead. No, no, go no, ahead. no yeah. you go. Go. No, I was just gonna say Benter was coming in back in. Now, but you go. Um, I was just gonna a shout out. I know I was talking to his son earlier, but a uh, long time. Athletic director here, Mark Dehart, I believe 27 years here. Uh, big, very influential in my career. Um, I know he was kind of feeling a little under, under the weather, and he's at, he's at home watching as well. So hopefully he enjoys the broadcast and gets a little watch, watch a little basketball in the process. Nice block by Paul. Also just has not been able to get in the, this flow of the game, and I hate that because he's a really good player and a really big game. Um, just foul trouble. Strapped him the first game, or first half, and you know how it is when. Just, just really tough. He couldn't get is. any, like you said, any type of rhythm. You know, you, you have a great warm up period, and then immediately have to go to the bench, and that, you know, negates all that. And just it's really hard to get, get loose and get, get things going again. He did try to go in the second quarter and almost pick up his third foul, and I think Coach Bradley did the right thing. Just right. not taking a chance. I agree. <clears throat> Heyman for three in the corner. Got it. Heyman's second three of the ball game. Mm -hmm. uh, great, great drive, great use of the rim. He knew yeah. a shot blocker was coming behind him, just wasn't able to connect. Oh, strong, wow. strong move there by Arthur for the and one. That was a good strong move with his left hand. If this is your first time watching Brownstown, we might have mentioned it earlier. It's it's not a one man show by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, they're a great team. They complement him well. And like you made the comment about the Heyman breaking the record on three pointers. Threes up. Great, Three's good. Great, right. great ball movement there by Orleans. I know we were complimenting the, the Braves ball yes, movement yes. earlier. That was a great possession. And it's nice to see Crocker and the Bulldogs keep it relatively close here as we close out the third quarter. Drive from Benner. Benner. He got it. Yeah. 
you, you know, sometimes I, I'm a firm believer that, of course, great offenses just, I mean, it's, I'm a defensive coach, but great offenses, Trump great defense, and that's what, what you saw right there. That was just a really tough shot over, over you know, a, an extended hand, just a good player making a good play. Sheffer picked up his second foul, second on the Braves in the second half. Orleans inbounding the ball underneath their own basket. Oh. In and out. Yeah. Lost control Tough of that ball. ball, wanted to shoot it before he had it. Nice look ahead, just couldn't handle it. Heyman fakes the three. Back in the hall, post up Austin. Austin. Well, I was waiting for something. Yeah. I I'd say good no call. I, I agree. Um, I think he kind of was falling early there. In the, in the college level, that might have been a, a technical foul for flop. And I, I know I'm a little biased, but there wasn't a whole lot of contact there, if any. As a fan, I would be glad that Austin didn't pick up his third foul there either. I'd like to see him continue to play and I, see I if he can make this a ball game. One shot. Probably for the Braves with 15 seconds to go. And yeah. no, the yeah, one yeah. shot for the Bulldogs with 13 seconds I, to go. I, 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 agree, I, agree, yeah. I agree with that. 100%. That was definitely off dinner. Is this going to be Jack coming out? Seems to be the pattern here. He comes out at timeouts or quarters. Coomer in the game for him. They're going that uh, trapping defense. Not going to let them make it easy on them. Three That's for shot. Allen. Oh. Well, got a quarter left. I just want to give one more shout out. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, my one of my former former players, senior this year, Kaylee Borden. Uh, it was her 18th birthday today, so... Uh, well, happy birthday. Yeah, you know, really instrumental player for us for the last four years. Four-year varsity letter winner. Um, just can't say enough good things about her. And a, a tradition here at Brownstown, this might be the smallest one I've ever seen, but the senior pyramid, um, and nobody got hurt, so that's always a good thing. <laughs> nobody got hurt, that's right. That's hey. right, but one, one thing I do want to talk about before you jump in there is... It's this crowd. I mean, it's there's 2,700 people in here or just over because people are standing yeah. along the back, and, and it's good to see yeah. Yeah. high school uh, basketball sell out. It, it's, it's awesome. Um, you know, well, I always say that I try to tell all our players, boys and girls, that we're, we're spoiled here in Brownstown a little bit, that we always have really good crowds, but, you know, not sellouts. And to have sellouts, you know, this is probably our fourth or fifth one of the year, something like that. Um, and we had some really good crowds for our girls game, but th this is just high school basketball at its finest, in, in my opinion. Yes, yes. I think it's important to give a little shout out to WJAA for yeah, a little help here. Definitely, uh, uh, Brian Summers for WJAA um, giving us some stats here. Uh, as I'll, I'll quickly try to go over, but Benner leads the Braves with scoring with 21, uh, followed by Coomer with seven. Heyman and Hall both have six. Jacob Arthur has four. And Micah Sheffer also with six. Benner with the steal. Up ahead. And, and to great, Darlidge. great to see senior right. Carson Darlidge also getting a scoring call in there. Nice look inside from, I think we got some substitutions here. Bryce Jones was, well, we're still battling on eight. <laughs> Harry finally got it in. Hunter Williams on the second attempt under the basket scores. He's going to the line for three. Fouls on Arthur, his second, team's third. I mean, that's, you love to see you're, you're down 22, down 24 points, and and Orleans still making effort, hustle plays, not not throwing in the towel yet. I don't think they have a choice with Coach Bradley. I agree. I think uh, Austin might have been held, been a 10 yarder in football. <laughs> still got the rebound. <laughs> Just, it's a little bit tougher. From up here, uh, Mike. Nope. Or should yeah. I say, Mr. Wright? We do have a <laughs> we do have a new rule coming in high school football about holding. We're going to do it from the uh, line of scrimmage instead of from the where, where it was spot of the foul. Spot the foul. So okay. you might you'll have first and twenty instead of first and thirty-two. Third, yeah, <laughs> another turnover there by Benner. 
Austin. Nice shot. Great Good for great, him. Great patience. Kind of what we talked about earlier. He was able to get to two feet, shot fake a little bit, and, and get an angle and score. Just want to root for him to have some success here so that he can get some confidence before next week. Not that yeah. he's lost any confidence, but... They are applying the pressure out front, trying to double up. Not, what do we got? Timeout. Timeout. At the right time. Um, it, yeah, it, even if they, you know, it's a 20-point ball game, it's definitely not out of question to come back yet. But, you know, against a high-quality opponent, it's, it's it's unlikely. But the, the Bulldogs definitely want to get some momentum here at the end of this game and, and carry that forward to next week. Okay, we got 30-second timeout. We'll start with 1A. Lanesville ranked number one, 27 and 2, versus Bethany Christian, 24 and 3, ranked 7. Go. Lanesville is unbelievable. Basketball team. Coached by one. Angie Hinton. Yes. Wife of legendary yeah. Joe Hinton. Yes. Yeah, and she's a legend in her own right. Yes, I mean, she she's, won, she's won a state she's title. She's New Albany, right? And, yeah, and, and a chance to be one of, I think, three coaches I read somewhere to, to win a state championship at two different schools. And one of those is retiring this year, Kathy Layden, who's at Northwestern. Yep. Um, so, yeah, she does an excellent job down there. Uh, they do. They have. They run like an amoeba defense almost. It's really hard for teams to figure out. Lanesville is predicted to win on the John Harrell website, 53-29, and led by one of the uh, one of the better players in Southern Indiana, the Lindsey Werner girl. We'll go to two A in just a moment. Yes, we will. Nice drive. Great, great take. Allen been really effective when he's been able to get in the lane in the sec second yes. half. I think all six of his points are in the second half. Benner, kick out. Got it. Three ball by the big fella. Yes. Benner with the steal, the save, and it's all for nine. It's still Orleans basketball. You know, six foot six post player hall, but you know, really efficient from the three-point line. Um, he shoots he shoots it at, at 36%, which is wow. really, really good for a big guy. Nice shot fake. It's a lost yeah. art. Was, yeah, it, it was a great shot fake. Great, great yeah. read, great pass. Just didn't go through the hoop. Orleans playing full court <coughs> pressure. Double teaming Heyman. He breaks it. Dribbles up. No, and, great, great, uh, great anticipation there by, by Jones. Quick substitution, Arthur back in the game for the Braves. Garlic comes out. Hall also coming back in, replacing Williams for the Bulldogs. Seems like no matter how good a team could be, when you change the tempo or change the defensive scheme, something good is likely to happen. Yeah. And you know, as, as well as Orleans' coach, it's just they, they have, I'm going to guess, no matter what, at least yesterday, they practiced against that 1 3 1 defense. They knew it was coming. It's just so hard to, to emulate with your JV team the yeah. length and, you know, the. Yeah, if you just, don't have the size, yeah. you, there's just nothing to. Now, I'm not saying the second time they bring that full court pressure that it'll cause a turnover, but just keep changing it up. Got yeah, nothing to lose. Benner reminiscing there of, I mean, uh, Dirk Almost, Nowitzki. Yeah, Dirk yeah, Nowitzki, like that yes. or Larry Bird, one of the yeah. two, yeah. Dirk, Dirk, Dirk Nowitzki made a living off that one foot step back in the, <laughs> in the NBA Finals. Nice pass. That was something your uh, typical high school player just won't do, can't do. Well, we got Blake Love back in the game. How many points does Blake have? He's kept him er kept him in it early. Eight, eight points, a couple threes, and yeah. a in a in a two point bucket. I knew those threes <coughs> when it was still fairly close. Heyman, three, twenty four point ball game, four and a half to go. Orleans quickly up the court. Brownstown still applying one three one one two two pressure. It's pressure, I tell you that. It's hard to in the corner. Yeah. I was wondering when that was yeah. going to happen. Yeah, I was just, in, just <laughs> waiting. <laughs> All right, you want to do 2A? Yeah, let's do 2A. Right, uh, right up Brownstown Central's Alley. This is going to be tough to talk about, Matt. 
No, no, I'm good. The unranked Lapel at 22 and seven against Forest Park Rangers, ranked two, 25 and three, and one of those three is our own. Our, well, one, one of those 25 is our own Lady Braves. Yeah, tough one in it, tough one in the regional, but they are a a really really good basketball team. I've said this all year long. I I felt like they were should have been ranked number one most of the year. They have everything that you need in a, in a team, especially at the 2A level. They got a Division One player that's going to the University of Miami, Ohio. Um, they they got a really good po point guard and another post girl. I mean, the, the Treader girls is six foot one, but she plays more on the perimeter. Um, and a, a, another girl inside that's just a, an absolute workhorse for them. And two other girls that know their roles really well, and they're also well coached. The defending state champs, they have four girls back from that, that, that state championship team. Um, they're definitely my pick to win. You did tell me before uh, you played them that uh, you thought they were the best team in 2A. Uh, they did beat North Knox in the re in the semi-state final, 41-36, and we beat North Knox we did, at the and, Toby Yoho over and, Eastern and, Green. And Mike said it was tough for me, but you know, we for those people who were watching and did, I mean, we had a four-point lead with about six minutes left. And he was talking about switching up their defenses. They switched up their defense and went to a trap on us, which was also their best defense. And, you know, we just turned it over, missed a couple shots, and uh, just a, a game of runs and a game of basketball. So tough one for us and our girls, but uh, we'll recover and, and be back again next year. It's not the first time you've lost to a team that ended up at the state finals, is it? No. Jump shot, oh. in and out. Because you're going to talk about another one of those in a little bit about in the 3A level. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Three-pointer for Paul. That one didn't drop. Austin with the rebound. Okay, at what point in the game do you start thinking, I got to get these guys out? Is it now since yeah, we see uh, Darlidge coming back? I mean, we got both teams, bigger I'm, fish to fry next week. Yeah, I'm going to anticipate Coach, Coach Benner is going to want to get his seniors playing together and, and give them a chance to, to get a standing ovation um, at some point together. Arthur picks up his third. Finish up the uh, 2A state final. We have John Harrell predicting Forest Park 46-42. Good basketball game. Could be. Could be. Yes. Could be. We'll do 3A in just a moment. I'm sure we'll have some. I know we'll have something to say about that. Timeouts and all that. Yeah. We'll do we, got a, we got a Mid-Southern representative. Six out of the last eight years, I believe. Something like that. Venter. Really solid defense yeah, there. Nice defense there, there by Hall, yes. Sheffer. Darlidge. Darlidge. One of the two seniors playing tonight. <coughs> nice take. Could not get yeah. the finish. They've had some looks that just will not fall for them. Great find. Senior to senior. Arthur for three. Heyman with the steal. Wisely pulls it back. One on three is not good numbers. Benner, another one had a pass. Sheffer for three. He got it. 30 point lead. Coach Bradley says timeout. 204. And you know, I say this, it's there's it's only 11 threes in a game for the Braves, and that's I, I that feel low? like that's <laughs> below their average here of late. So all right, 3A, Fairfield, <laughs> ranked seven, 27 and 2 against Gordon Central Panthers, ranked six, 27 and 2. Mid Southern Conference Champions. Go. Yeah, uh, once again, Gordon Central, sort of like your Braves, that they have a lot of length. Um, 
they, you know, they got a five foot 11 girl who I believe is going out of Southeast and a Weber girl. And they got six foot, six foot one inside and a couple guards that have some length and, and just the same thing. They're going to go to their one, one, two, two or one, three, one trap um, and, and force a lot of turnovers. And that's, that's how they score a ton of bat or a ton of points is off their turnovers. Um, and, and really well coached. Uh, Josh Conrad does a really nice job. He's been at Henryville and he's been really successful since he's taken over uh, for a legendary coach at in my school at Ford and Central. Uh, Ford and defeated number five Indian Creek in the finals of the semi-state. Uh, Fairfield beat top ranked Twin Lakes in the semi-state final. That was Twin Lakes first, first loss. loss yeah. uh, John Harrell has Ford and predicted 46-44. I think we know why Jack fouled there. Here it comes. Into the game. Well, and and talking about that 3A, yeah. like I said, I think that that is uh, that is six in the last eight years that a, an MSC school has been in the 3A state championship game, and probably would have had at least another year in there. But North Harrison, be North Harrison, because of the success factor. Um, got moved up after back-to-back -back state state title runs right. and had to play against what, what I think yeah. is an anomaly. Uh, yeah. Here's your two seniors. In, in, in the Bedford North Orange basketball team. Um, you know, and you're going to talk about them, Aaron, here in a second, but what they have done and continue to do is absolutely unheard of. 12 sexuals in a row. Um, Jeff Allen is just phenomenal, but it didn't just start with him. It's been a lot longer. I mean, just the tradition that they have there. It was unparalleled. Did we just talk about 4A and I missed it? No, no okay. I'm just leading up. Yeah, yeah leading up to that 4A. Great, great, great bucket there by Graves. Great find. Let's reset the um, players out there for Brownstown. We got number five, Carter Covert. Number 30, <coughs> Pearson Wheeler. Number 22, Greg Hutchinson. These names sound familiar. 12, yeah. uh, Caden Gwynn. Yeah, there's somebody else out there. Number 20. I don't have 20 on my roster. Who is that? 20 is is Lane Pendleton. Lane Pendleton. Who, who scored 24 points here in the JV game. 66-38. We're a minute 10 to go. You know, some, sometimes it's funny that these JV guys, look at a little mismatch there. I mean, 24, there's uh, free 6-3 versus Caden Gwynn, all like maybe 5'4 with his shoes on. Um, <laughs> but, but the JV guys get a ton of extended action sometimes. You know, they, they play more minutes than anybody else on some nights. Uh, for Orleans, they've got some new bodies out there that snuck in there. Bryce Burning, 15. Jackson Freed, number 24. Uh, Gage Dixon's 5. Uh, 23. He's been out there for a while. Nate Graves, uh, he's been out there. Uh, 20. Connor Elrod. Again, some players that played in the JV. As the student section is going crazy there, they, they're chaining we want Neil, meaning they want three there by, by uh, burning. They want the a, uh, a senior. Uh, yeah, they want, they want the other senior, Bryce Neal, there on the bench who's been uh, ineligible all season. Not ineligible, but injury, uh, injury all season. Um, so he hasn't been able to, to play. That's cool. The student body wants him. That's got to feel good for him to hear that. Oh, for sure. He is dressed over there, right? He is dressed. Okay, as an official, it drives me crazy that you sub and don't let him shoot. <laughs> Here goes a five-second call. I understand the, the score and all that, but if I was on the other side, I would let my kids play too. And yeah, I, I think you, you you let them go, you let them play. Yeah. I agree. It's, it's hard, especially, you know, a minute to try to let say, somebody just go out there and play. That's not playing basketball. I mean, and your final 66 to 41 in favor of the home team here, the Brownstown Central Braves. Well, it may not have been the, the game that the JV game was, but it was still a good game. They're, they're a good team. And like I said, they're going to make some noise. Uh, that'll be a fun sectional, especially it doesn't matter if they play Bar Reeve or Lagodi. Uh, right. on Saturday night, as, you know, assuming all the pouring the oil, everybody gets there. Coach Bradley, good luck to him.
We're gonna do four right now, or wait till we come back. Let's do four right now. We don't have to go anywhere. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we don't have to. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We'll do stats in here in a minute after we get done with 4A here. But uh, Well, we have from the north, Fishers, who had quite the gauntlet of the sectional, beat Noblesville, who uh, was ranked second. Fishers was ranked third. And Bedford North Lawrence uh, at ranked number seven, 26 and three. Uh, Noblesville's 21 and four. Um, what do you got? Well, we should let Aaron do this. He's the voice of BNL. Well, sort of. I, I, I do stream a lot of uh, BNL's games, or all of them, all the home games, that is. But uh, they're just a special group of, of girls, really. Um, they're, I know basically all of them personally, and they're all amazing girls. Um, but they all work extremely hard, you know, with two Division One athletes on your team there, uh, Carson Norman, Chloe Spring. Um, you know, they're going to lead the way. And um, But I, I see tomorrow night as a defensive battle. I think it's going to be a low-scoring championship game, and probably whoever gets to 50 will probably win. I, I, and I, I have no idea, but I'm excited. I get, I'm going up to watch the 3A game. I'll first, be up there, too. And then watching the, uh, the 4A game as well. You know, my wife coached for for nine years there, so, um, you know, she's got a state championship ring at home and uh, never lost a sectional <laughs> in, her, in her career. But as, as you said earlier, Jeff Allen is is an amazing human being, great basketball coach. Played for it's, Ray Meyer at DePaul for your old-timers. Yeah, and uh, uh, just uh, unbelievable. You know, you go back and you talk about the history. You go back to Pete Pritchett, Pete Pritchett back in the early or late 80s, early 90s. Was it 1983 the first champion? So we're talking 40 years. 91, 40 years. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're, you know, arguably, they are the best program in the state. I mean, arguably, arguably, I mean, so I'm sure other people have different. Yeah, you're, you're, you're going to have people say Heritage Christian. Um, Coach Rising up there won, I think, seven state championships. Uh, that's just a little bit different. Uh, animal, we won't go there. Um, but when you when you asked me, like when I took over a girls program four years ago, and you asked me to talk about girls basketball, even though I, I mean I wasn't, I'm a lot more knowledgeable now. But two programs came to mind. First, first and foremost was was better for North Lawrence, and second was Scottsburg and Donna Cheatham. Yeah, Th those yeah. are just the two programs that you know, in, in my opinion, are the, the the top of the top when you look at girls basketball. I know. Um we're talking about Bedford North Lawrence going for their fifth title. Fifth, is that what you said? Yeah, fifth. And you've got Fishers, who's been a, a school recently, 20 years, 20, in 20 years, had never won a <coughs> sectional or hadn't won a regional. I don't know. I don't know that. But they, but I never, think they won their, their first, first regional. Yeah. You got tradition versus non-tradition. It's some maybe Fishers is just going to play happy to be there. I don't think that's going to be the I case. I that'll be the case. But yeah. I mean, you beat Noblesville in double overtime. Um, like I said, that was one heck of a, a sectional. Um, the Stars beat Center Grove, scored 50 on them, and like uh, somebody said, that Defensive was the magic battle, number. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then yeah. it missed some free throws down the stretch there against Lawrence North and kind of made it more interesting than it needed to be. Um, what well, they beat Lawrence North? 47-40. Fishers beat Lake Central 41-24 <laughs> in the semi-state semi final. Yeah, but I'm just looking forward to a really good – R really good basketball games tomorrow. I mean, that's well, that's what I'm looking for. John Harrell, 5250 uh, stars. Uh, so you've got go ahead. two just, points. Just when you talked about, you think it's going to be a defensive battle. I think that gets underlooked with BNL a lot. You, you, you know, you get those two stars that are Division One players, but they get it done on a defensive end. Yes, they and, do. And that's where it starts with them, and they create so many buckets off that. that just in your face, nonstop, all the time, and you know that just wears teams down. And yeah. It, yeah, John, we'll find out tomorrow. You got John, 32 if, if, minutes left. That's if, it. If John Harrell's correct, you got a four-point game and two two-point games. That's that's like our JV game tonight. That was pretty exciting basketball. Yeah, but let, hey, let's talk about tonight's game. Yes. Let's end this one. Let's go over some stats here. Uh, let's go over stats for your the Orleans Bulldogs. Uh, hold, on, hold on, I got to do one shout out to my kids. They're about ready to go to sleep. But uh, hey, Jay and Rhett, love you guys. Go to bed.
<laughs> thanks for let, thanks for letting your dad come and do this. That's right. Um, but you know they they were led uh, in scoring by by Blake Love with 12 points, uh, Carter Allen with six, Ryland Crocker with five, Hunter Williams with two, In Hall uh, with four points. A great job defensively by the Braves on him. Bryce Jones with with two, Bryce Burning with three, Exa Xavier Austin with three. Nate Graves with two, and Jackson Free with two. Um, just once again, defensively for the Braves, holding both Hall and and Austin to, to three and, and four points was a big reason that they win the ball game at 25 yeah, points. Yeah, Austin didn't get much playing time. That's just yeah. part of it, too. And, and then the Braves, of course, were, were led by Jack Benner with, with 21 points. Parker Heyman with nine, all on three threes. Going down to Carson Darledge, one of your seniors with four points. Micah Sheffer with nine. Another your other senior, Jacob Arthur with seven. Chase Coomer with seven, and Colby Hall with nine. So some really really balanced scoring there. Yeah, really good. Just an overall uh, really good game. I think uh, you know Brownstown just hit more shots. I think it's it just more comes down to that. that. You know they're. I don't think. I mean John Harrell had a 15 point game, <laughs> but you know it's. Yeah. It's, it's different that basketball. Makes shots and the other team that doesn't, it's, it's and, just one of those um, games. Coach Allman mentioned the length of, of the Braves out front. It's just hard to simulate the, the guard play out front on their Yeah, it really is. Ball and, pressure. And, and you look across the board, I mean, with the stats, Brownstown out rebounded 28 to 22, um, turned the ball over less. Brownstown had seven, and, and Orleans had nine. So just really, I, I just feel like the Braves just controlled almost every aspect hey before you do anything else i know coach allman said this earlier and um, both trent and todd said the same thing but uh kudos to aaron for allowing uh, his equipment to be brought over he's you know he started this uh on his own during the covid crisis at bedford north lawrence and you know that's that's yeah. a service he provided because of that just like we uh we get all these sponsors for for games and little leagues and all that, and it, he just fell in love with with the uh, idea of broadcasting games, and yeah. and uh, and here he, here we are three years later, and you're from COVID, past COVID, and still doing it. That's right. Just looking to expand right now, and uh, hopefully hopefully do it a little bit more than than I I am. But uh, guys, I can't thank you guys enough for for spending the evening with me up here and. Uh, um, get me in the door. That's that's basically uh, what it it's is. It's hard to get in the door once it's out, isn't it? <laughs> that's right. That's right. But uh, uh, guys, I can't thank you enough. I truly enjoyed it. Can't thank Todd and Trent enough uh, for for coming on board as sponsors tonight to help make it make it possible. Tonight. And I think I think we would be remiss not to uh, thank Maria Conklin, the athletic director of Brownstown Central, and Joe Shefford, the principal, yeah. for sure uh, allowing us into the here yeah. crazy tonight. She was. She, she was. She, she was uh, she's taken over, you know, filling big shoes, a guy who's done it for 27 years, and she gets thrown to the fire. They, her first game is, is an immediate sellout in the Jennings County game. Like, that was <laughs> – I mean, we had a sellout tonight, but that night, you want to talk about standing room only, they were five, six, seven, eight deep over here on the sides because we also had a, a freshman game that night in the Ox Gym. And then what I think it was game number two, we get a broken backboard. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. something that's never happened here. Yeah. She's course. had to write checks that he never had to write. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, she's had some crazy stuff, but she's done it with, with class and with professionalism, which is nothing, I mean, what I expect. Um, you know, she's yeah. been great for me to, you know, with our with our run there, winning the sectional. So, yeah, thank you to our, our whole administration here uh, for allowing us to do this. Yeah, I, I can't thank them enough either for, for giving us permission to do it. Um, and uh, Athletic Director Orleans, Mark Wheeler, provided us some information. Yeah, yeah thank you to Mark and uh, Cubby, as we call him. But uh, uh, thanks, Mark. And uh, want to wish both teams good luck next week. And uh, definitely want to wish the Lady Stars good luck tomorrow as uh, – as uh, close to my heart, the Lady Stars are. Yeah, so. good, good, good luck to all, good all luck four to of those, everybody those playing. South, yeah. yeah, South, especially the Southern teams. A um, couple teams that get beat us. I, de I definitely want to wish Sports Park and, and Court and Central the best of luck and definitely the Lady Stars. That's right. Well, guys, let's end it. All right. How about that? Thank everybody, you. Everybody, thanks so much for tuning in. If you can, hit that subscribe button. Would love to have you subscribe to the channel. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Live your life within the moment, moment.
and don't go wait until the morning, morning. You never know when it is over, over. All that I know is we'll get older, older. So let us dance this night away. We get lost in the crowd, it's getting thicker We get away, get away from the drinks and chatter Haven't said a word, but it doesn't matter Till the air can Standing in a blurry dream No one else can see her Live your life within the moment the morning, morning, you never know when it is over, over, all that I know is we'll get older, older, so let us dance this side away. Can't see us. So let us dance this side away. 